Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Friday Night Lights, Lockhart, Texas style. This is Scott Smith here with Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vite Magazine. They're a new uh, group with us this year. I'm going to first tell you about what's going on tonight. Tonight we have the Travis Rebels from District 20 or District 12, Class 5A Division 1. They're here tonight to play your Lockhart Lions from District 14, Class 5A Division 2. So as you can see, the, the school is a little bit bigger than ours, but they come in tonight as a preseason, or not a preseason game, but the first game of the year. And uh, our team tonight, first off, I'm going to go to the guy that started it all for Lockhart way back in the day, and that would be Randy Fry, the Rock and Rev. He is our QA tonight. Want to give him a shout out because without Randy Fry, there would be no Lion Country Broadcast Network. So, Randy, we're glad to have you aboard as our QA tonight. And then, as well as things that we just could not do without, McKelty Altier, a senior here at Lockhart High School, she's our producer. And if she was not in this, right now you would not even be hearing us. You wouldn't be able to see the Lockhart score uh, helmets or anything because it took her to figure that out prior to us going on the air. So thank you, McKelty, for what you do. Someone who's not in the booth tonight that usually will be in sports other than football is senior A.J. Acosta as he is in the band, and he will not be with us during the football season, but he'll be back with us with basketball, soccer, and things of that nature. My, my right-hand man, my buddy, a friend, the Sarge, Emilio Juarez, is going to be the color commentator. He's going to be the stat man. He's going to tell you the scores from our district. He's going to do pretty much everything that you all know and love that he does. If you haven't seen it yet, go to the Lion Country Broadcast page, network page, and he put a video up about the pregame of what he was trying to get everybody amped up and, and kind of introduce people and watch the video. It was, it was pretty entertaining as I got to see it live. And then myself, Scott Smith, I'll be doing a play-by-play. -play. This is my second year as the football person, but it is my third year as a play-by-play -play guy here with the Lockhart Sports, and I'm glad to be here. We're about 27 minutes, 20 seconds away from the kickoff. Things we have going on, we're going to have an interview with the new um, administrator, so to speak, of our school district. He's going to tell us all about what's going on. The superintendent will be here. He'll talk with Emilio. Then I took three interviews, two from football captains that are seniors and one from our med team that are, is also a high school senior. So with all that being said, in tonight's football matchup, the first game of the year, I'm going to hand it off now to Emilio, the Sarge Juarez. <laughs> and thank you, Scott, for the great introduction. You know what? It feels good to be back. It feels good to be back with you back in the booth and uh, for Friday Night Football. And uh, like I said, we're welcome alongside with, by McKelty, who's done an amazing job as a producer and this is just part her second time that she's on this computer and she's nailed it like it was nothing well like, and, and she started with her and aj actually started with us back in basketball season so these two are like pros now and it's a good thing because as we all know when it comes to a computer i am not a pro but i'll <laughs> hand it back off to you all right and uh like once again i'm so happy to be back here and uh, i couldn't i want to give a shout out to the Lockhart Line Committee for continuing to give me support through everything my family has been through. And right now I'd like to take a quick second to give a shout out to a former Lockhart Line fan who recently lost his life a few months ago in the name of Mark Martinez. He was one of the first emailers to send Chuck to Ice Malakata and Randy Fry when they did their first broadcast in Victoria West. And uh, I want to send uh, uh, my deepest condolences to his family, his friends, his uh, fiance, and his, and his kids. And you know, it, it's you know when you lose a line like that, it, it's ne it's never a good thing. And also, they gave a, a moment of silence to a Johnny Zapata who recently passed away during the week. And he was a huge Lockhart line. He was probably one of the best linebackers that was that's been that has been seen to play defense and, w and wear the Lockhart uniform jersey on. 
Well, so. as you said about Martinez, this was a guy last year, one of the most – you know, he always was making comments and positive comments and wanting to know what scores were. And we are, we will definitely miss Mr. Martinez. What a great character. And, uh, and I didn't know him but a year, and I enjoyed every moment I spoke with him. But it looks like we've uh, actually had a guest show up here, Emilio. I yes. think we might have someone ready to go on the air. All right. And uh, if you don't mind, we're going to go ahead and play the coach's interview right now that I took place so the, that way uh, our, our guest can take a listen to it and then he can give his, his, his thoughts at the end of it. And uh, the first interview that I've done since I've been back is with Coach Brian Herman, and you'll be listening to the Christ Market Coach's Corner, which will be brought to you live by Lion Country Broadcast Network, power, powered by KMAC Sports. This is your Cruise Market Coaches Corner, and I'm here with Coach Brian Herman, head coach of the Lockhart Lions, and this is the Sarge. Hello, how you doing, Coach? I'm great, thank you. All right. Well, you have already uh, two scrimmages and one maroon and white scrimmage. What have you seen so far from the maroon and white scrimmage up until this last scrimmage that's improved with the team? Uh, a lot of different areas. Biggest thing is we've cut down on some of the mental mistakes. Uh, we're constantly working on technique and those things week to week, regardless of where we're at. We're always going to try to improve technique-wise. But the, the big difference was some of those mental mistakes, those unforced errors, have gotten less and less from scrimmage to scrimmage. That's good. Uh, talk about some of the key offensive players that we're gonna, we're, we should be focusing on tonight and uh, pretty much throughout the season. Okay, for us, uh, obviously our quarterback, Jaden Garza, you know, he's uh, he was a backup last year. He's taken the reins this year as a starting quarterback. Uh, Daquan Ellison, who's returning, I think he had 1,200 yards plus rushing last year. Uh, Jesus Aldana stepped up at, uh, at halfback. Our offensive line I'm really excited about this year. We've got three returners in Jaime Guerra, Alex Vasquez, and Andres Hernandez. So, you know, I'm really excited about those those few individuals, but more importantly, the, the team all together, they're, they're really gelling right now. We've got some new wrinkles, and uh, we're having a good time. All right, now as far as the defense side of the ball, who's going to be the key players that's going to that's pretty much going to shore up that defense of uh, – that you have out here on the front line elijah sanchez returns he was out for a bit last year with some injuries uh at the middle level you got uh alex sosa eddie Tucar, aiden hernandez and then in the back you know we're really excited about some of our defensive backs some that have come out of the basketball gym to help us out uh, like devin clark uh, alex thompson uh, Caleb Jennings, Jackie Edwards. So there's a good group of kids in the back end, and, I, and I'm leaving a few off. And it's not it's not that uh, that they're not as important. It's just you know that I can't list everybody. So exactly, or else we'd have about a 20 minute interview. But uh, all right, Austin Re Austin Travis Hayes uh, Rebels comes into the, tonight's bro uh, game. They've probably won. I want to I want to say it was five games in the last three years. What have you gotten your team ready for them to not look past this team? to look forward to the next week. Travis is very, very athletic. They, they've played tough schedules the last few years. Um, you know, they, their numbers aren't where they want them to be, just like our numbers aren't where we want them to be. Uh, so they, they struggle a little bit. They only have a freshman team. They don't have a JV. So last night our JV had to find another game. So, you know, when you don't have that feeder system coming up, it, it's hard to, to put a, a product on the field. They have a lot of young kids on their varsity roster because they don't have that JV. And they, they hurt with numbers and depth just like we do. So, uh, you know, they, they're not that different from us. They're very, very athletic. Um, we just have to rely on our schemes and our, and our execution and, and try to not make mistakes. Exactly. So as far as tonight's matchup between Lockhart and uh, Travis, what is going to be the keys of victory for that Lockhart needs to take care of? In other words, come for them to come out with a victory. Uh, it's going to be the same every week up front, you know, offense and defensive lines, how they play, uh, key game, key, keys in the kicking game, you know, not making the mistakes in the kicking game, not being sloppy. You know, we lost a few ball games last year just off uh, uh, mistakes in the kicking game, whether it be not fielding a punt or uh, getting an extra point return or, you know, whatever it might be. So special teams, especially early in the season when you haven't had as much time uh, in preparation for special teams that those can bite you early in the year so you know a little concerned about that and then you know game speed you know tackling in space you know when they, they're very athletic so tackling in space is always a concern so if it comes down to it it's it's blocking and tackling and special teams 
Okay. All right. Well, Coach, thank you. I'll go, I'll go and let you go. I know you're going to be a busy man tonight. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, let's get a Lockhart Lion victory tonight. Thank you. Go Lions. And that was Coach Brian Hummer right there with the Christ Market Coach's Corner. And uh, I'd like to welcome to the booth the new superintendent for Lockhart ISD, Mr. Mark Estrada. How you doing, sir? Good afternoon. Doing right. outstanding. Thank right. you for the invitation. Uh, thank you to be. Thank you for coming up here. And uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. But you know, first, give the Lockhart Lion fans a quick background of yourself. Absolutely. So I have actually been in Lockhart ISD for going on seven years. I was the principal at Plum Creek Elementary. I was the principal at Lockhart Junior High School, and then I was an assistant superintendent prior to becoming the superintendent. So I've been in the community for a few years, and what's actually very exciting for me is almost every single one of these football guys I've I've had as their principal. So I know pretty much every kid that yes. was here, uh, unless they were a new move in. So it's a very exciting time for me to to be the superintendent to really have ownership these are my kids uh, although this is a new position i've been here and i, I take it very personal that uh, these are my kids here yes exactly and another question i wanted to talk to you about he goes you know it's it's been a big issue the last few years especially because there's been so many school shootings that i know i've read one of the letters that you had sent that you know talked about a safety task program you know it, it it's it's almost you know it's it's almost something that had to, to be taken place because of all these issues that happened. But talk about the safety task program that Lockhart ISD has uh, implemented. Sure, I'm happy to. You know, as you said, un unfortunately, we live um, in uncertain times, and we have to do everything and take everything into consideration to ensure that our kids are safe. So we've, uh, this past summer, established a safety task force, and we have the Lockhart PD, the um, Caldwell County Sheriff's, Lockhart Fire Department, uh, Caldwell County Emergency Management team uh, who's, who sit down with us as a district and really plan out and, and ensure that we have systems in place. We have everything that we can do preventatively um, to, uh, to, to ensure that, you know, we're doing the things that we need to do keep, to keep kids safe. And as well, if something does happen, you know, hopefully, you know, we pray that we would never have a, an active shooter event like we've seen across the country but we we plan and we've put in systems in case that that were to happen in in, in a terrible event like that so we have what we we call a standards rep response protocols and essentially we've just aligned at every school across Lockhart ISD the drills that we do what we name the drills every little step yes. so that there's not any confusion no one calls the same thing something different and that, that's really important so that any kid, regardless of the campus, they know the drills. If a sub comes in and it's the first time on the campus, they know the drill because it's exactly what we do across the right. district. Uh, those, type, those types of things. So that's been uh, uh, one part of it. You know, another part of the training specific to the question uh, for active shooters, we've had training on what's called, it's called CRAZE, and that stands for Civilian Response to Active Shooter Events. And Lockhart PD has been instrumental in training our staff, training our teachers on what do you do if that were to happen in our schools. And we've gone through those steps, how we respond, how we yes. keep our kids safe, uh, what do you do in every type of scenario that, that you can imagine. Um, you know, and, and so that, that's really important. You know, the, the big piece as well is, is not only what do you do in those events, but how do we try to prevent those types of things from happening, um, especially when we look at many places across the country where, unfortunately, it, were, it was students who, who were yes. uh, do, doing these things. So we have a lot of new systems that were put in place and also a social-emotional learning curriculum so that we're, we're teaching kids all the way from pre-K how to deal with stress, how to deal with anger, how to set goals for themselves, how to be positive human beings, so that over time we, we build these these skills and beliefs in kids so that we try to limit that from ever happening right. when they become older right. and don't know how to handle stress. And like I said, unfortunately, you know, because of events that's happened throughout the country, you know, it, you know, luckily nothing like that's happened here at Lockhart ISD, but because of what, they, what y'all have learned from other incidents that's happened, Y'all been able to implement y'all's own program and make it safer for, you know, our kids 
to go through the Lockhart Independent School District without having to worry about it. And God forbid something does happen, I feel I feel I feel safe knowing that my kids will be safe because y'all have prepared the teachers and the staff to 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 prepare accordingly to whatever the situation may come about. Absolutely. All right. Um, you just listened in on the coach's interview, so uh, give me your thoughts of his interview and uh, what, what you expect to see tonight from yourself as a fan of uh, Lockhart Lions sure. Sports. As a fan, as, as someone who knows the kids very well, I, I heard familiar names that Coach Herman mentioned and that I certainly will echo. I'm excited about Jaden Garza, uh, Jesus Saldana, you know, Eliza Sanchez, Eddie Tukar. These are our kids who have been working since – I've seen them since elementary and middle school – and it's exciting to see them to have this chance on, under the Friday Night Lights to, to show what they've been working for for, for many years. Uh, you know, as well as Caleb Jennings, I heard Coach talk about you know, his ability to, to, on the defensive end. So I, I'm just excited. I echo the, those uh, statements that Coach had. But what really struck out to me and I agree with is uh, being disciplined. And you know, he talked about it's all about blocking and tackling. And as a superintendent, I think that's important because in everything we do, we want to teach kids how to be disciplined. Yes. Regardless if they're on the football field, in the classroom, you know, as, as a community member, you know, what does it mean to, to know your assignment? What are you supposed to do? And you do the right thing. So that, that's encouraging for me to hear because I think that'll, you know, this is a, a game, a sport on Friday nights, but we're really teaching kids to be adults. Exactly, exactly. Uh, before I get to my last question, who's this uh, young gentleman that you brought in here with you? This is Eli. Uh, you, you don't, you didn't think you were going to get away without coming on the on the air. Would Say you? hi, Eli. Hi. <laughs> so Eli is he he's he one of my back boys. I said, oh, I yeah. saw you back there. <laughs> he's he's a, a first grader at Navarro Navarro Elementary, and he's a future lion. He'll he'll be on on these. Uh, under the lights right. one one day soon, so he's excited. He yeah. loves sports. Hopefully, I'll I'll be up, up above ground long enough to be able to call <laughs> his name out. Okay, my last question. I've asked the other ads that were before, and I've got and they, and I've asked when they first built this press box, and I got to tell you, can I have a sushi bar up here? <laughs> Is, are you allowed to say that in Lockhart? I mean, we are the barbecue capital of Texas. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I mean, but. Uh, by the time I got up here, Scott had done already ate all the chicken and all the <laughs> sausage that was up there. And I was like, I got to have my own sushi bar because I don't think Scott likes sushi. So, see, there you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go no. to H-E-B and see if they have anything next Friday. <laughs> they don't already check. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, Mr. Estrada, I you know, want to congratulate you for, uh, for getting the position of superintendent. And uh, I really like what you talked about, about the, about the safety task program. And I'm pretty sure all those that are listening are that, uh, you know, can rest assured that the district is prepared for anything that comes up. You know, God willing, we don't have to come up, you know, nothing like that would happen. But if something were to happen, they're more than prepared above and beyond to take care of the situation for the safety of our kids in, in Lockhart and Pittsburgh School District. Absolutely. You know, we have the best staff, I, I believe, wholeheartedly, our, our staff, our teachers. Our custodians, our cafeteria crew, they're some of the hardest working people and they care about kids. And I'm confident that they're going to do everything possible to not only educate, but keep them safe. And uh, so we're, we're excited about this school year. Thank you for the opportunity to, to come talk to you guys. Okay. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. And, but before we go, I want to thank you once again, Mr. Estrada, for coming up here. And uh, feel free to stop by and, uh, you know, just chit-chat with us and uh, – Enjoy some Lockhart Line football tonight. Thank you. I'll bring sushi next time. All right. There we go. See, y'all heard it. All right. We're going to take a quick break right now. When we get back, we'll get back to some more uh, uh, First Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And you're listening to Lockhart Line football on KMAX Sports and Fight Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium where we're going to do some interviews now uh, on the the kids side of things so we're going to start out with this is faith herman 
And obviously the name should be familiar because it is Coach Herman's daughter. And uh, anyways, we've got an interview with her, and we're going to go ahead and try to get that going here. We're trying to get things set up with my handy-dandy phone here. All right, here is Faith Herman and what she had to say tonight. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. I'm here with Faith Herman, and she's part of the med crew, the high school kids that come out and help these athletes. And my first question for Faith is, what exactly do you ladies do for the football team? So the expectation for a student athlete, it, student athletic trainer, my bad, um, we are here to give the boys water at every timeout, every break, every time they come to the sidelines. We're here to wrap up any wounds that they need. We're here to uh, give them ice bags, help them out with really anything that they need. We're kind of just here for them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that sounds great. And you know, it, because we see you guys running around the sidelines like you're on fire right. and we were just curious. So my second question, I know you've been doing this a while and I think I know the reason why you've been doing this a while, but how long have you been doing this? I am pretty sure I started helping out when I was nine years old when we were at Liberty Hill. Uh, I just saw the trainers on the sidelines and I was like, I want to be on the sidelines. And so for a while, I used to run out and get the tea after kickoff from about maybe five to nine. And then I was like, wow, I really want to help with the trainers. It looks really cool. And so ever since I was nine, so that's... Well, eight years now I've been doing this. <laughs> so the fact that your dad is the head football coach has nothing to do with it, I'm sure. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so my last question, importance in your life, give me a shout out to some people that are important to you. Uh, my parents, my dad, my mom, uh, my little sister who's a lionette, and my little brother who's always running around doing something. <laughs> also my grandparents. That is great. Well, Faith, I'm looking forward to your basketball season, and it was good talking to you tonight. Thank you for taking the time to have an interview with me this evening. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, well, that was Faith Herman. That was one of three interviews that I had set up tonight, and I actually didn't even think about that crew until I happened to see her, and I decided to pull her aside. But the guys that we want to hear from are two guys that are very instrumental to this football team. They're both seniors. Um, Jaime Guerrero, an offense and defensive lineman, and Alex Sosa, who is a running back and linebacker for the Lions. We're going to go with Jaime first, and we'll get his set up here real quick. And this is what Jaime had to say about his game and his season. This is Scott Smith with uh, Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports, Duvai Magazine. I'm here with yet another one of our senior captains. This is Jaime Guerrera. He is one of our linemen, I believe, on both sides of the ball. And uh, so I'm, I've got three questions for you as well as I did for Alex Sosa, and that is, this year, what are your goals for your senior season? The, our season, to, I wanted, we want to be, make the playoffs, play on Thanksgiving. We want to pound it everyone's mouth. We want to have a shutout for every game. I like that. I like that. I would like to see a shutout for every game. Okay, my second question to you is tonight. It's what's at a hand. It's your first and last home game. And I don't mean it's your last home game, but it's your first last home game in your career here at Lockhart. What are your expectations and what are your goals for tonight's game? Tonight, make big plays all the way around, offense and defense, and just make as many touchdowns as we can. Have a shutout tonight. I love that as well. And the last one, this is the easiest question for everybody. Who would you like to give a shout out to, you know, p important people in your life? Give a shout out to my mom and dad and my aunt and uncle. They just had their baby today, so I'm playing for that baby. That is awesome. So now we have Uncle Guerrero here. That is incredible. All right. Well, sir, I know you're busy. I know you got things to do. I want to thank you for your time and good luck tonight. Yes, sir, thank you. All right, and that was Jaime, and he was he was very entertaining. Um, I told him he was going to try to beat his sister's record for longest interview ever from a high school student at Lockhart. Uh, Savannah was a soccer star last year, a senior captain, and I think three minutes and 47 seconds is the longest interview I've ever had with one single person, and Savannah holds that record. He was nowhere near his sister's record. So now we're going to go with Alex Sosa, 
Alex is not just a great football player. He's a great baseball player. And uh, this is what Alex had to say. And his was, as everybody predicted, going to be the shortest interview because he's not much for talking. But this is what we got out of Alex Sosa tonight in his interview. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAC Sports, and we're here talking with senior Alex Sosa, one of the captains of the high school football team this year. And Alex, I've got three questions for you. The first one is going to be, what are your goals for your senior year? Very good, and I wouldn't expect anything else. Second question, tonight's game, we're up against Austin Travis and the Rebels. What is your expectations and what are your goals for your game tonight, your first home game? Uh, for us to dominate from start to finish and get the W. Very good. And then the last question, who do you want to give a shout out to to give some recognition? Uh, uh, my parents, Tony and Sophia Sosa. Very good. Sir, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. Go out there and make us proud because we know you will. Good luck. Sir. Well, that was Alex Sosa, and unfortunately, of all the interviews, the wind decided <laughs> to blow 90 miles an hour while he was talking, and I do want to throw this out there so that his girlfriend knows <laughs> that she was the last one that he gave a shout-out to, but you could barely hear him because of the wind. So I just want you to know, if the girlfriend is listening, that he was thinking of you because he did say your name. Now, real quick, <laughs> I'm going to real quickly go through what I got out of the Dave Campbell's Bible of High School Football. And as it always does, usually the teams that we play, it talks about players that are not even on the roster and so I'm going to tell you of the ones that I do know and kind of give you a little uh, tidbit about them. Last year, they were 1-9 overall. They were 0-8 in district play. Their head coach is Joe Frank Martinez. Uh, people that they uh, said that were quality players, running back cornerback Darian McFerrin, he rushed for 514 yards last year. They had a, a linebacker, David Rodriguez, which I did not find on the sheet. He ended up with eight, 68 tackles last year. Offensive lineman, defensive lineman, Cameron Kraft Cannon returns from surgery from last year, and he's supposed to be the backbone of their offensive and defensive lines. They also mentioned their quarterback, Stephen Lopez, an offensive lineman named Joshua Vance. He started five games as a freshman last year and is one of their key players. Wide receiver Jalen Creighton, cornerback Isaac uh, Wright. Then they talked about two other guys that did not even make the roster, so we will not even go into that. Again, they are out of District 12, Division One, and Class 5A for Lockhart. Last year, we were the best 3-7 and seven football team in the state of Texas. We could have easily have been 7-3 and three and in the playoffs. I think we lost a lot of our games by, at the last play or the last series or, or you know, whatever. Very... Very seldom did anybody rock our boat. We were 3-7 and seven overall last year, 1-7 in district play. Obviously, our head coach is Brian Herman, and we run the infamous slot T formation. I actually talked to a kid who attended Crockett High School who works for me in Austin, and he said how he hated playing Lockhart, <laughs> but this slot T because you never knew who was going to have the ball and all those cut blocks. He hated those cut blocks, and he was a linebacker for him. So he said he hates that slot T, and he hates everything that Lockhart did <laughs> because they never knew who was getting the ball. Guys that stood out, Daquan Ellison, senior running back, rushed for 1,200 yards last year. Alex Sosa, senior captain, had 75 tackles last year. Jesus Aldana, we watched him in the scrimmage the other night. This Man. kid is a small version of Larry Zonka, and I'm going to let Emilio get yeah. to those here in a minute. Linebacker 82 car, I think he's been starting at linebacker since he was in sixth grade. I don't know, something like that. Eddie's been around for a long time, and he looks like he's 27 years of age when you go up and stand up against the kid, <laughs> and he's just a junior. You've got defense offensive lineman Elijah Sanchez. He's a junior. Um, and then you've got quarterback, defensive back Jaden Garza, who's going to run the show this year. Um, one thing that we're going to try to do at halftime is have um, head maintenance man Lee Raspberry is going to try to come in. We're going to talk to him a little bit uh, for another interview, but we're getting ready for the national anthem, so here we go to that. The Texas flag is Cadet Megan Roach, and the rifle bearer are Alonzo Rodriguez and Cadet Lena
I'll tell you what, one thing Lockhart is good at, and they've got people that can flat sing in this school. Um, here we are, less than 20 seconds away from the kickoff. I'm going to hand it off real quick to Emilio. Let him give us some of his thoughts for the game tonight. Well, as I was looking as they were singing the national anthem, Travis doesn't didn't travel too deep with them. This low, it's almost like half the Lockhart team is on the other side of the field. So I don't, that's pretty much going to play a factor because there's going to be a lot of players playing both ways. And if you look at the Lockhart lines here on the sideline, this is probably the most amount of players that I've seen in my time. And uh, from the scrimmages that I've seen, they've they would they've had, you know, they've had they didn't have too many kids playing both ways, which is a good thing because. That sometimes in the you know last couple of years that became a factor, which has called fumbles, turnovers, and penalties. Which, like you said, Scott, they were the best three and seven team here in the state of Texas. They could have easily been seven and three. They were in every single game, but it was just maybe the last part of the third quarter going into the fourth quarter is when things slipped away because of penalties, you know, and and fumbles and mistakes. But it looks like Lockhart's going to have a, a fresh set. And my, my thoughts for tonight's game for Lockhart to win is they have to not look past Travis, who's only won five games in the last two years, who gave up probably about last year, I, I want to say it was about 50 points a game, while they only scored 36, and 20, 21 of those came in one game. So, you know, it's going to be a big test for this Lockhart Lions to try and go pedal to the metal all the way through but as they, we know with the slot T offense, it's a time-consuming thing. But I think our guys up front against their defense, our offensive guys up front against their defensive guys up front, it looks like Lockhart might have the advantage as it gets later into the ball game due to the team look like they're going to be playing both ways. So my thoughts, Lockhart should come out with the victory, but you never want to look past the underdog because the underdog can come back and bite you as well also. So. Well, I feel blessed. We have Coach Herman's wife sitting right below us, so maybe she'll be able to give us the signals. She's probably the one that calls the plays. Who knows? <laughs> um, but anyways, we're getting ready to start. I did not see who won the toss. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna I guess. I say name. Lockhart's gonna kick off. I think we're kicking off, and I'm looking down at the roster because. Our, our longtime kicker, who, again, like two cars, started for like 13 years in kicking position, is no longer here. It looks like Alfredo James is going to be the kicker. He is a sophomore. And uh, we are going to have a very young team. I know we have 27 seniors. I know we have 20 juniors and six sophomores. But I know a lot of the guys that play a lot are in the junior class and a handful of the seniors are going to be out there sparingly as well. But, you know, where, where Emilio talked about what what I what he thinks we need to do to win, I think our offensive line, that's the key. If we can get our good athletes the ball on the outside and get them around the corner, this could get ugly. If we can't, it's going to be a dogfight. It definitely is. And after the kickoff, once uh, Travis comes out to take the field, I'll go ahead and go through with the Meitler Storage game break and uh, give you all the games going on tonight in the District 14, or five, District 14, 5A Division 2. And like I said, longtime kicker, uh, the Mr. Automatic, Juan Ocampo, has moved on to, uh, I, I believe, uh, I forgot what college he went to, but he's done moved on to the next level. Well, And uh, we're definitely going to see what we got at well, we, his replacement. We actually have junior kicker Eduardo Ponce is kicking off, and he's got some legs on him. Like set up for a pooch kick. Man, he put that over his head. It's going all the way back to the end zone. It bounced at about the 10. It rolls into the end zone. Man, that boy's got legs as big as trees. <laughs> that was just a little toe poke yeah. that went all the way down to the 10-yard line. And here we go with tonight's Meitler Storage game break. You got Alamo Heights playing at home against New Braunfels Unicorns. It's 0-0 right now. Eagle Pass is at Uvalde. Game is 0-0. Of course, we got Travis here at Lockhart. Tyvee will be going to Drippin' Springs, which is going to be a big game for them. Then you got Kennedy Rockets at Divine Warhorse. Medina Valley travels from Medina all the way to Waco as we get set for the first play. All right, they're in shotgun formation. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, single back. They're going to call, they're looking to call off of the play they had originally. And it looks like we have a timeout. That's a weird way to start the game. 
And for the last two members of the district, it's Bandera at Memorial Miniman. And Champion, who played last night, loses to Stephen Falcons 21-7. to So Bernie Champion starting off the season with the – with the with the 0 and 1 record, so here we are again. It's first and 15. That was actually a delay of the game, and what a tackle there! That is number nine. That is Caleb Jennings, the junior. He got up there and stuck him as soon as he caught the ball. And it was number five, JJ Garza, with the catch. And that was a speed that we had talked about during the scrimmage, where Lockhart would usually given up about 5, 10, 15 yards of long ball on a play like that. Caleb Jennings, with this speed, was able to get there and drop the, the receiver for a yard loss. Okay, so we got three receivers to the right, or left, one to the right, and they're going to hand off to the left side. It is number two. That is Darren McFerrin. He goes nowhere. That was number 35, Alex Sosa with a tackle. Great job by the defensive line. Also when there is Aiden Hernandez, who was able to get in there and uh, finish off the tackle. You know, so far so good what I've seen, and we had talked about because it's Lions have moved to a 3-4 defense as opposed to the 4-2 last year, or 4-3, and they're looking pretty sharp so far. Third and a long ways to go. Two receivers each side. Quarterback's going to roll out left. He's just about got ran down. He gets rid of it. It's intercepted. Adam Romero from the oh, basketball incomplete, team. Incomplete. Oh, my. Adam they're Romero. Bounce off the ground. So, number 11, Adam Romero, a senior who came out for football for the first time since middle school, made a diving catch, but they said it was incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. 10.49 to go here in the first quarter. And Lockhart's defense so far looks like they're here for business. They do have a wind in their face. That is, Travis has a wind in their face. I cannot read the number of the kicker because they have gray jerseys with white numbers. That makes it difficult, but we'll find it out. 55, maybe? That's going to have some backspin on it. And Angel Lamus with the, with the punt. It'll go out to about the 48-yard line where it's down there by number nine, Isaac Wright. And so Lockhart will take over at 10.40 to go in the first quarter, first and 10 from the 48-yard line of Austin Travis. Melio, good gosh. I tell you what, if you wanted to start off the game on the right side of the ball as a, as a defensive guy, that's the way to start off with it. They had two plays for minus yardage and one almost in interception that was incomplete. It hit the ground. And a short punt where Lockhart's going to take over in Travis territory and at the 48-yard line. So I'm looking at Travis. Their linemen are pretty big boys. They're in a, they're like a goal line defense right out of the gates. And and Jaden Garza going to throw. What is going on here in Lockhart? They throw it up for Devin Clark. Oh my, that was close to being interference. Devin Clark, six five senior another one of the basketball players the reason why i know this is i coach these basketball players in the off season you got devin clark at 65 Cortland zambrano at about 61 another athlete receiver and adam romero the point guard who's now playing receiver and uh, d-back so it goes incomplete second and 10 10 34 to go here in the first quarter Slot T in motion. Garza with it up the middle. He breaks it to the outside. He's to the 40. Oh, they drop him backwards. Nice tackle there by number two, Darren McFerrin and Emilio. Like you said, they're playing guys both ways. We could wear this team down. Definitely, and that's something that we're, we're going to have to look into as the game continues on is, you know, to see how the defensive uh, setup for the Travis Rebels is going to be able to keep up with this offense. So far, Jaden Garza looking great at quarterback. The junior, they're going to be in that slot T type formation. Third and four, handoff to Daquan Ellis. Da he's Daquan's going around the corner. Up the middle he goes. He gets out to about the 33-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 33. He gets the first down. So Daquan Ellison off the left tackle. Nice gain. Definitely uh, great awareness by da by Daquan. Being patient and through the hole and not making a, a quick decision, but following his line and letting his, letting his lineman set the blocks up for him, which got them the first down. I'm still looking for the Jesus Aldana play. Uh-oh, we got trouble in the middle. <laughs> and I did not see who got the carry, but they lost a yard. Adanya, that's him. They were reading that play as he got nowhere. They stuffed him right at the line. So they're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage, second and 10, 9-18 to go here in the first quarter. And it's not like, I mean, so far, Lockhart's line of scrimmage, with the exception of that last play, has done a good job. Most definitely. And, uh, you know, 
with the backs that we got, second down and 10 could be wiped away quickly for another first down or even a touchdown. So we're at second and 10. We've got Aldana, and it looks, oh, they jumped off sides, I believe, but I don't see any flags. De 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 Tron, or Dequan, why am I getting them confused? Dequan <laughs> Ellison, right at the middle of the left tackle again. They have found a soft spot, and they're going to get a first down. I thought maybe we might have jumped off sides. There was no flag. Then I thought maybe they jumped off sides, and there was no flag. So it's going to be a first down as Dequan Ellison, who rushed for over 1,200 yards last year, is still doing the Daquan Ellison kind of thing. Yes, and, you know, he's he's a more patient runner this year. It was a 13-yard run, but once again, he allowed his blockers to get in front of him, picked his spots, did a couple of cuts, and was able to pick up 13 yards for another first down. Like I said, with the running backs we got, second down and 10 could be wiped away for another first down. Well, I'm trying to see who the big boy is. Whoa, there he goes. Aldana around the corner. He's to the. He's going to die for the end zone. And they count him out at the one-yard line. Oh, my goodness. What a run by Jesus Aldana as he took it around the left side and he dove for the pylon, was just short. So that's going to be first and goal from the one-yard line. That could have looked like the, he got the got just across the pylon, but they're saying he stepped out of balance right about the one-yard one, one yard line. But excellent run by Aldana. Had everybody fooled going to the far side of the field. As Lockhart Lions, if your listeners going right to left. Well, I'm trying to find out who's – okay, it was number 71, so it looks like Andreas Hernandez is the guy they're running behind. And they jumped off sides. Flags are down. We're in the end zone. Daquan Ellison with the one-yard touchdown. But there's flags, but it is on Austin Travis. 6 nothing, 8.43 into the contest. Great scoring drive by the Lockhart Lions is the – you know, great blocking up front by the offensive linemen. Open up some huge holes for Daquan, and which ultimately left Aldana taking the ball down to the one-yard line to give Daquan the one-yard plunge for the TD. And the extra point by Alfredo James is good. So I'm doing my usual riding of the touchdown so that I will remember it when we get to the end of the game. But we had a one-yard touchdown scamper at 843, making it 7 to nothing. The extra point by Alfredo James is good. And we'll stay with you right here is, uh, you know, like I said, you want to, the defense wanted to start off with an excellent stop, and they got that. So what do you want to do with that? After you, your defense has stepped up and made a stop on three and out, you get your offense out there and pound that ball just as uh, the one gentleman that you spoke to. They want to pound that ball, and that's what they did. They pounded, pounded. Of course, it surprised everybody as Lockhart threw for the, a pass on the first play. But, with, like I said, with the running backs we got, second down and 10 is quickly turned into first down, and then Lockhart was able to march down the field for 48 yards and a touchdown on the scoring drive that took one minute, 53 seconds. Well, well on eight plays, and uh, of course, da Daquan Ellison with the one yard touchdown run. Well, what I, I thought I was in the wrong uh, booth when I saw his pass on first down. Um, that may be more passes than we had most of last year. I mean, that surprised me coming out throwing. I'm glad to see that, especially going for uh, Devin Clark at 6'5". Another kick over the top of the head. And this Darren McFerrin does everything. He's going to bring it out. Wow. And he's broke some room. So he brings it out to about the 10. He was tackled there by number 61, Sammy Yabara Jr., down there to make the tackle. Not really a wise choice to bring it out of the end zone, especially after you bobbled it and let it go back into the end zone. Well, Eduardo Ponce has got strong legs, and he's. it looks to me from here, being an ex-kicker, that he's toe-poking the ball, but it's enough of a toe-poke with that leg that it's getting back there down to the end zone, and this Darren McFerrin is on kick return, and he's on offense, and he's on defense, so he's going to be a tired puppy tonight. Uh, he sure is. So we got two receivers to the right, one to the left. They give it to McFerrin up the middle. He breaks free, but he is tackled immediately. And that is by number 57. Let me get a name on that. That is Henry Mendoza, senior. And uh, definitely the running back came through that hole, tried to do a spin move, but Mendoza was right there in his face for the big tackle and a short gain on the run. So Lockhart's defense looking good, second and seven. There's two receivers to the right, one to the left, two guys in the backfield. One is an H-back. They're going to give it to McFerrin up the middle. 
And he goes nowhere. As a matter of fact, he may have lost a yard. Actually, that wasn't McFerrin. That was Lorenzo. And what did you say his last name was? Number 22. I'm not even going to try. Lorenzo Puente. Lorenzo Puente. Puente. <laughs> And, you so, know, one thing you're noticing, too, is when these lines are making tackles, they're not soft tackles. They're no. hitting hard. And they're they're wrapping. So it's third and eight, 7.34 to go. Lockhart up 7 nothing here in the first quarter. They're going to throw. He's in trouble, and he's going down. It's Sanchez with the sack. Eliza Sanchez. Of course, he had outside pressure by number 75, Faustino Gonzalez, who's able to get around the outside, force the quarterback in, and Sanchez was able to wrap him up for a sack. And two play, two, this is two drives for the defense where they've been three and out, which is great because now they get to come back to the sideline to get their rest and be ready for more. And, and they're punting into that wind. So right now we have Sanchez and uh, Sosa going for defensive player of the game. Two call with a block. He blocks the punt. And it's going to be down at the one-yard line. Eddie Tukar, the junior middle linebacker, Dove at the punt, blocked it at the one-yard line. It's our ball. They had to dive on it. Us on the – no, they're going to say it's on the two-yard line. First and goal. What a clean break to get back there. Nobody blocked Eddie Tukar. And what's great about it, he had all the time in the world. But, you know, just like you teach him, if you're going to block the punt, aim for the foot. He didn't dive right at the punter, which was, you know, which was great that he did it. He didn't do that because – it could have been easily rough in the punter, but clean block, and the ball sputtered around around the one two yard line before the offensive lineman for Travis was able to recover it. Daquan up the middle, I bet. I'm just bet up. Oh, they call procedure, so it looks like we'll be backing it up and giving him some more yards. Yep, procedure. So Lockhart does do what they kind of do a lot. <laughs> a silly mistake, and now that instead of first to goal at the two, it's going to be first to goal at the seven. Well, good part. I'd rather have them do that here. Then you know, at the goal line, then on their other uh, other side of the field. I just think they're wanting to give De Daquan more yards when he scores the touchdown is what they're doing here. So here we are, slot T type formation, handed. No, they pitch it out. Aldana. Aldana around a corner, untouched, touchdown. 6:42 to go here in the first quarter. It is 13 to nothing, Lockhart. Great blocking up front. Great speed by Aldana to get around the outside. And uh, now Travis defense, you know, they might not have gotten tired out here. They get to go back and sit down and rest too. But the way this offense line is clicking, it's going to be exciting to see how the rest of this ball game is going to go. It's only been less than six minutes off the clock, and Lockhart's already up 13 to nothing on the Travis Rebels. Here comes the kick, and it looks good. And it is good, 14 to nothing. First quarter. Let's take a break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vite Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Lockhart High School. 14 to nothing with 6.42 to go here in the first quarter. And again, we're going to go through some scores. I'm going to hand it off to the Sarge. And here we go with the Meitler Storage game break. At Alamo Heights is New Braunfels Unicorn 7, Alamo Heights 7. Uvalde, who's hosting Eagle Pass, hit 7 nothing Eagle Pass. Of course, here at Lions Stadium is Lockhart 14, Travis Rebel 0. At Drippin' Springs, it's Tyvee Adlers 3 to nothing over the Tigers. The Kennedy Rockets are falling have are down seven to nothing against Divine Warhorse at Divine. Medina Valley, as I was saying, who had to travel from Medina all the way to Waco, talk about a road trip. Is they're down six nothing to number four ranked La Vega in four A. And you got Bandera Bandera Bulldogs who traveled to San Antonio. Actually they're in San Antonio too. Memorial Miniman are up six to nothing in that ball game. And like I said, last night's action saw Bernie Champion fall in the first game of the season to the Stephen Falcons 21 to seven. Okay, so we're gonna do real quickly, and I know they're getting ready to kick off. 
I'm doing my senior night. So I'm going to give a little shout out for senior night to a great producer and AJ Acosta, who's also in the band, but our girl up here in the stands, McKelty Altier, senior night for just kicking rear end here as the producer for Lion Country Broadcast Network. That's going to be another kickoff out the back of the end zone. And I turned up, turned up McKelty, McKelty's mic, so you got to say something now. You can't just have the headsets on and not say nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, McKelty, so what are, you, what are you thinking tonight? Um, I'm proud of them. You're proud of them. What do, you, what do you think about your work for us? It's fun to do. Um, Feel free to tell us that you're good at it. I, you guys think I'm good at it, <laughs> so I'm guessing... <laughs> In one of those Bob Euchre moments, he goes, well, you learned a lot of broadcasting. Cool. <laughs> okay, we got the quarterback in trouble. He's going to run with it. He gets out a four-yard gain. There, there's flags going everywhere. People are kind of shoving. One thing I did want to say also about McKelty is she is very athletic. She's one of the power lifters that did well. As a matter of fact, I think you guys went to state this year, didn't you? That's what I thought. Oh, our lion. Don't mess with our lion. She was a state champion. You don't want to mess with our lion mascot. State <laughs> champion in powerlifting. And real quick, that last Lockhart Lion drive was one play. Took all of seven seconds off the clock. It was capped off by an eight-yard touchdown run by Aldania, who was, went into the end zone untouched. So the crowd, Mike, always picks up interesting things no matter where we are. Whether it's home, away, you get to hear interesting things. And I'm, I'm getting to hear a little girl talking to her mother about why she's doing what she's doing. So you get to hear cute little things like that during the game. Apparently it was on Travis, so they've been backed up. It looks like maybe a hold. No, no personal, personal foul. foul. So there's two receivers to the right, one to the left. The quarterback is Lopez. He's looking. He's running to the left. No, he, that was actually McFerrin, wasn't it? Yeah, McFerrin. McFerrin. With it. So McFerrin is probably going to need uh, oxygen and uh, a lot of Gatorade at the end of this game. He gets about two on the carry. And like I said, when these Lions are making these tackles, they're, it, it's not no touched football out here. These guys are playing solid tackle football tonight. And they're and when, like I said, when they're making a tackle, they're hitting them hard. Well, that was Noah Garcia who made the hit on that one because I heard Larry Rodriguez, the PA announcer, He's got guys up there helping me spot, so anytime I can cheat, coach is asking a question. Looks it, like timeout for the Lions. Okay, timeout Lions. One thing about Coach Herman, you know at least three times a game he's going to be on the football field talking to the referees about something, and I love his enthusiasm. Coach Curry is another one. These yeah. guys are here for the kids. They are as excited about football as the kids are. Most definitely. And this is Coach Herman's sixth year as a head coach for the Lockhart Lions, which is an amazing feat. I mean, it's amazing that he's been here this long because for a long time, these, these young kids, the, these young Lions, have had head coaches come and go for one year, two years, three years, and they leave. Coach Herman has been here for six years now. Here we go again. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Lopez is looking. He's in trouble, and he's going down again. And I got to find out who that was. Number 92. No, we don't have a 92. 98. 98. We don't have or a 88. 88. Chris oh, Cadell. Chris Cadell, the senior with the sack. And also in there, Sanchez in there. They pancaked the quarterback and, and sack. That's the second sack for the Lockhart Lions in, in the last two drives. Well, here I'm looking like a liar because I said a lot of the underclassmen were getting a lot of playing time and whatnot. But most of the seniors have stepped up tonight and made some hits. Well, it is senior night, so they, they want to go out big tonight. No kidding. So it is now third and 24. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Lopez rolls out to the left. He's in trouble again. He throws it, and I believe it was incomplete. Still they, no signal from the referee at the far end of the field. Adam Romero was in there on the play, but they said he caught it. They said he caught it. So it was caught, and I want to say it was number 30 that caught that Nick Zach. But a nice play by Adam Romero, the senior basketball player, now football player. And it's now fourth and a long ways, and they're punting into the wind again. We don't even have anybody deep. We're just no. playing defense. 
See Eddie two car bouncing around. Two cars. Uh, they're going to check his number this time. And the ball doesn't even go 15 yards. It is going to not even get to the first down marker. So Lockhart will take over first and 10 at the Travis 31 yard line. 4.35 to go here in the first quarter. 14 to nothing, your Lockhart Lions. We're going to take another commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, well, we are in the slot T. It was Jaden Garza who's going to roll out to the left side. He's going to be looking for number 24, Jesus Aldana, and he just can't come up with it. It falls incomplete. We've thrown two times in the first quarter. This has to be a record since I've been an announcer <laughs> here to throw two times in the first quarter. And not just that, with the lead as well also. But, you know, uh, Aldana was wide open. It was just a little bit over his reach. Yes. You know, as far as the first pass, it was the Devin Clark, and it was a jump ball, but, you know. Yep, here's the handoff, and I believe that was number 42, if I saw that right, Darius Spruill. Yes, it was Darius Spruill over the left side. He gains about three yards. It'll make it third and seven. 4.15 to go here in the first quarter, 14 to nothing. The slot T offense is working well. Devin Clark checking into the game. 6'5", wide receiver. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's going to the sideline already. He just it's says wide out. He's like Jerry Rice, just throw me the ball. Uh, he's joined out there with by Jose Aldana as well. And here they're going to hand it off to Daquan Ellison. He goes around the left side. He cuts back and he's close to the first down. A nice run by Daquan Ellison. It's gonna it's gonna be a first down for Daquan. It might as well just say every time Daquan touches the ball, we're getting a first down tonight because that's his third first down by himself. Might have to call him Mr. Automatic first down. Someone's got to be automatic. This That's year. right, because we <laughs> lost our automatic to graduation. Yeah. I'm gonna miss that kid. Yeah, it, it was it was a great to see uh, Juan Ocampo kick. I mean, it it was just amazing. He had a very strong leg, and you know he learned real quick as a, as a freshman. All right, slot T, tight formation. They're gonna pitch it out. Oh, Daquan Ellison had to play with that one. That was a bad pitch. We got lucky. We even came up with it. Looks like we lost about six on the play. The pitch was a little bit high and behind him. And even if he would have caught it, I'm not real sure that play was going to get much. That was a loss of six on that play. Like I said, it was a bad pitch. But, you know, even in this situation where it's second down and 16, you know, with the running backs we have, I hate to sound like a broken record, but, yes, you know, you could either go for five or 95. Well, here we got Adam Romero in now. Another one of the basketball players. Three of the basketball players deciding to play football. Oh, is it us or was it them? It's going to be false it start. It was us. False start on Lockhart. So that's going to move them back to the 31-yard 30 yard line. Uh, again, they're trying to get Daquan more yards. That's <laughs> what's going on. So it's, it's, uh, it's dare I say, um, Second and a long ways, and uh, we're at the 31-yard line now, whereas we started out at the 19. So we're in a tight formation. They're going to hand it straight up the middle, and he's going. Aldana's going, going nowhere. Looks like might have lost. No, they're going to they're going to put him right back at the yep. line of scrimmage. So Jesus was not able to get anything out of that. They were ready for that, and their linemen are pretty big guys compared to ours. Um, I'm thinking maybe get get this ball outside. Let let somebody speed around the corner. Right now, checking in, also a soccer goalkeeper, Spencer Nelson, a senior. It's um, I asked Spencer both. I'm like, you're a soccer goalkeeper. Why aren't you punting? He goes, I can't kick a football. <laughs> it's right. It's he not said round. It, he goes, it's it's harder. <laughs> so they're gonna hand it off to. Ad Aldana around the corner. He breaks it up the middle. He's going to run hard. He's getting back to the original line of scrimmage. We're down to about the 18-yard line. They're going to mark him right at the 19. Clock is going to be stopped with a minute 50. This might, I mean, they may go for it on fourth down, but if your kicker has a leg, he's got the wind at his back. Maybe give him a shot. 
but they're going to go for it. Hey, you know what? And this the way the Lockhart defense has been holding, you know, they've gone through three consecutive series on three and outs. Yes. So, I mean, why not? You're at, you're at the 19-yard line. You're not going to really lose and, much. And look who's out on the right side. Devin, Devin Clark. Clark, our 6'5 senior. Again, Cortland Zambrano, the only other basketball player we haven't mentioned yet. Garcia is going to – or Garcia is going to throw it up. Devin's trying to get to it. That should have been interference. He interfered him getting to the ball, but they're not going to call it. So it falls incomplete. He threw him a little bit long. Garza just needs to set his feet. He's kind of throwing off balance. But if he sets his feet, I think he's got a better shot yes, at that. Yes, definitely. And the quarterback, had, he, he was step to step with him, but he threw a little forearm yeah. shiver. And uh, that definitely was a missed call by the, by the referees. But, you know, you, you miss some, you gain some. So but, one thing I want to say, it, knowing Devin Clark, he didn't argue about the call, so maybe he didn't think it was interference either because when Devin Clark gets something that happens like that, sometimes you got to worry about what's he going to do. Yeah. And Devin Clark's a great kid. He's a great athlete. But every once in a while, he, he likes to question things. Yeah. But he walked away like, you yeah, know, no big deal. Yeah. So and here definitely, we, and he, like you said, he is an outstanding kid. He comes and borrows my lawnmower to cut grass to make extra money. So he's, he's a good kid. So here we go. Austin Travis, single receiver to the right, two receivers to the left, two running backs in the back. They're going to give it to number 22. He's going to run around the left side, and he's going nowhere. As a matter of fact, he's losing yards. And I want to say number 16 was the first to get there, Ryan Ainsworth. And they said also Garcia in there on the tackle. Look like a quarterback keeper right there. So we have got, they got a long ways to go. They're going nowhere fast. They, As a matter of fact, I don't even know if they have positive yards. So they got two receivers to the right, one to the left, two backs in the backfield. An H back is one of the two backs. Lopez is rolling out right. He's off, throwing off balance. He hits number six, and he's immediately knocked out of bounds there. And that's by number 14, Cortland Zambrano. There's his name. Cortland Zambrano, great athlete, great kid. Love him to death. Yes, and once again, like I said, the difference between this defense this year from last year is the speed that's out there. They might have a lot of youth out there, but the speed out there is a lot quicker this year than it was last year. As you could tell, as soon as the receiver caught the ball, Cortland was right there, not just to push him out of bounds, but to hit him out of bounds. And I like to as tease Cortland when I coach him in basketball about you know being a little little, little pretty boy on our basketball team. He didn't play like a little pretty boy right there. He put a stick on somebody, so that's good to see. They had a holding penalty on the play, too, for Travis Rebel, so that backs them up even further. If you throw the ball at Cortland Zambrano, the chances are he's going to pick it off. He's got great hands. He can jump extremely high. So here we are, uh, second and 20, I guess. They're going to fake the handoff, roll out left as Lopez. He's in trouble. He throws it. It's caught. And it looks like it was Devin Clark, the safety, that knocks him out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And I can't see who caught the ball, though. Was that 42? Yes, Mark Martinez with the catch. Also, Jackie Edwards Jr. was out there along with Devin Clark to, to push the receiver out of bounds. Oh, and Jackie Edwards watched him in the scrimmage. That's a good backup quarterback right he's, there. He definitely is. He got, to, he got a nice arm on him, a strong arm. And he's a sophomore. Yes. And he's my neighbor. <laughs> Jackie Edwards, he's awesome. All right, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Last year it was it was uh, Cole Dees that I would always give shout-outs shout to because he lives across the street from me. If Daniel Bubba Dees is listening to me, hey, buddy. So we are at the end of the first quarter. Lockhart up 14 to nothing at home in senior night. We're going to take a break here, come back and do some scores. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vite Magazine. Johnny & Sons Pain & Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain & Body, we won't steer you wrong. 
You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. One thing I want to do, I got to do this. I don't want to get myself in trouble. We're starting the second quarter. I want to give a shout-out to my wife, Vanessa Smith, as we just celebrated our third anniversary together. Got to spend some time down in Galveston checking out the Sandcastle competition. I got an icy. I was so excited. <laughs> it was a fun time. Here we go, starting the second quarter, 14 to nothing. It's third and eight. They're stacked close. They got two receivers to the left, one to the right. <laughs> They're going to throw it out. Oh, good oh. job. Cortland Zambrano, did I not say he yeah. could jump? Now, if I were yelling at him right now, I would say, which hand should you have been using? And he'd look at me and say, my left. Because we do that in basketball. If he would have <laughs> reached with his left, I think he would have had a pick six. Definitely, and he used his right hand on that too. So we're definitely going to have to get with him and talk to him about that. Oh, I won't <laughs> I won't let him let that down. I'll, I'll definitely, when he sees me, he'll go, I know, I know, my <laughs> left hand. Corlin Zambrano, there, what not to love about that kid. Another one of the basketball players who's playing for the first time. So it is now fourth and eight, 11.56 to go here in the first half. Now with the wind towards uh, the Rebels back, we do got two uh, receivers back deep for the Lockhart Lions. And it looks like it's going to be Aldana, and I can't tell who the other guy is. It's going to be number – is that 55 again? Ooh. Yes. Angel Lemus is kicking, but I can't see who the other guy is. Here comes the punt. Actually not a bad punt. It's going to be a fair catch. Caught at the 35-yard line, so Lockhart will take over. First and 10 at their own 35, and I know Emilio Lesarge Juarez probably has some scores he wants to give out. Most definitely, and here's uh, Meitler Storage game break. It is Nebronfos Unicorns 10, Alamo Heights 13, Eagle Pass 14, Uvalde 0, Tyvee Antlers 10, Drippet Springs 7, Kennedy Rockets 0, Divine Warhorse 7, Medina Valley 0, La Vega Pirates 12, Bandera Bulldogs 6, Memorial Minutemen 6, and here at Lionfield it is Lockhart Lions 14, the Travers Rebels 0. They're going to give it to Daquan Ellison on the left side. He's up the middle. He could go. He could go. He gets around the corner. They finally catch him from behind. That's number 42, Mark Martinez, that saved a touchdown. What a run. But what's better is the offensive line is making holes that I could run through. <laughs> yeah, we all would like to run through those ho through holes right there. But definitely, is you know, like I said, as the game wears down, goes on, this offensive lineman is going to create bigger holes, but for now, if they're creating these holes now, can you imagine what it's going to look like later on in the game? Because we do notice that Travis came lightly to this game as far as the depth chart. So they're going to give a handoff to Aldana around the left side. Here he goes. He gets around the corner. He's down to the 30. He gets and dives to the 28. They might mark. Nah, they're going to mark him at the 29. A first and 10. Another great run by Jesus Aldana, the senior running back. He has had a great game, and we really were impressed with him in a scrimmage we saw last we year. We sure was, and his, you know, the way he runs the ball reminds me of a lot like Curtis Hawkins back in the day, a couple about four years ago. And he, you know, he didn't worry about too much about juking and jiving. He was either going to run around you or he was going to run through you. But you know, great run by Aldonia hitting the outside with the speed that he has and. This offensive lineman has done great so far. They're going to hand it off to Daquan Ellison up the middle. He's going to get around the right side. He gets tripped up. He had about five guys all over him, but not before he gained about five or six yards. That's maybe the first carry he's had where he hasn't gotten a first down. So 10.30 to go here, first half, 14 to nothing. Lockhart, they're moving the ball. It's a second and about, uh, let's call it two and a half, maybe three. The line has done a tremendous job, and it's like we're talking about. I really think with the fact that they don't have a lot of numbers, this could get ugly because we're playing a lot of kids right now. We could wear them out. Most definitely. Slot T. 
They're going to give it to Daquan. He gets around the left side. He's going to cut back to the middle. He breaks free for the first down. He's down about the 10. They're going to mark him right at the 10-yard line. Again, the line of scrimmage is making holes that anybody could run through. And if you give Daquan a hole that big, he's going to get some yards. He didn't gain 1,200 yards for nothing last year. We're under the 10-minute mark, still 14 to nothing, but we're knocking on the door right now, barring any penalties. Exactly. And once again, another patient run by Daquan Ellison, who's picking his spots perfectly because of the huge holes that this offensive lineman has been giving him. You know, great awareness for the senior tailback, and, you know, it's showing the, the hard work and dedication they put in during the offseason. You're seeing it right here. Okay, here we are up the middle. Daquan. No, that isn't. Yeah, it is. Daquan. It was Daquan. He went off the right tackle this time. He goes all the way into the end zone. That's a touchdown. That is a 10-yard scamper, making it 20 to nothing here with 9.24 to go in the first half. Great Great drive by the Lockhart Lions. They were, you know, they were stopped on their previous drive. You know, they scored two of the first three drives in the first half. They come out here to, I mean, the first quarter, start here in the second quarter to come up with the 65-yard drive and a touchdown to end that. So here's number 17 again, Alfredo James. He's going to miss the extra point. He missed it. Look like there's. Wait a minute. What's going on? Something's going on down there. We're going to pretend that was maybe a, a fake. We're just going <laughs> to try it again. Looks like they're lining him. They weren't ready. They're going to give him another shot. I'm going to bet he doesn't miss it this time. He's going to bury this thing, even though the wind's blowing it about, looks like, 30 miles an hour right in his face. The holder. We haven't gone over this. Jackie Edwards Jr., my, my neighbor, the sophomore, is the holder. That's a lot of pressure on a sophomore. Most definitely. Oh, goodness. It was a bad snap, but they got the ball. They're going to run it. The kicker is running for the end zone, but he's four yards shy. That would have been neat to score a touchdown as a kicker. <laughs> so it missed 20 to nothing. We have 9.24 to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a commercial break with that touchdown. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Bite Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. 20 to nothing, Lockhart. And like we said, we're going to beat this like a dead horse. There's, I, I, I bet you there's not 35 guys on their roster. It's one page. I mean, it's one very small page of players. Their running back is playing both ways and returning kicks. We can wear them down. And I, don't, I thought when, the, when I watched the scrimmage, our line is not that big. But, man, they are making holes. Yeah, just looking over their their uh, roster, they only brought 31 players to this game tonight, and you got to have numbers here in the class 5A. And uh, so here, right now it's showing. Let's see what the toe poke does in the wind. There goes his toe poke, and it still gets down to about the 15-yard line. It goes out of bounds, so they're going to get a few extra yards out of this. Yes, but uh, but still, that's a nice kid to have kicking off. He does a good job. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. And let's get to the scoring drive real quick. Uh, last scoring drive for the Lockhart Lions, it was five plays, 65 yards on the drive. Took all of two minutes and 18 seconds, which was capped off by a 10-yard touchdown run by Daquan Ellison. Yeah, Daquan, I don't know, you know, why they give him playing time. I just, you know, he nah, just I really doesn't get anything done for us. No, it, I mean, <laughs> it's like, my gosh, this kid could break a touchdown. He reminds me of kind of like, Barry Sanders without the spinnings all the time because yeah. Barry would do a lot of spin moves and whatnot. But Daquan, you may stop him for three plays in a row, but that fourth play, he's going to drop you for 90. Daquan is a scary, scary running back. Now we go here. They're running tight on their offense now. There is no spread offense. They're going to run it. They're looking to run it down our throats, and they do just that on the first play. As that was, um, I believe that was – Number two, Darren McFerrin up the middle, gains about seven. Second and three. So they're going tight on us now, and they're just going to run it at us. Not a bad idea considering they haven't been able to throw it against us. Most definitely. And, you know, 
Travis has to do something. They're going to want to get into this ball game. Kevin McFerrin around the outside. He's got the first down. They have gone to a power offense. They are, again, trying to run it down our throat, and they're trying to slow this game down and not make it a, a foot race to the finish line. But once again, it's like what you see with Lockhart defense, uh, offense in the past. You know, if you're down by 20 points, you might want to try and pick the pace up a little bit. Right. So we have first and 10. They're going to pitch it. It's up in the air. And I'm. the tackle was made by, that was Caleb Jennings. What a great defensive play by Jennings. Sanchez was there also. Tukar was there. But it was Isaac Wright, the receiver, on an end around with the run there. That makes it second, and it looks like seven. Yes, definitely. Isaac Wright, you know, for all intents and purposes, he made a great play to stay with the football and not, you know, and not drop it for a fumble. Uh-oh, over his head again. He's in trouble, and he's going to get hammered. And that was number 75. That is Faustino Gonzalez, a junior line, lineman there for us, big boy. He got in there, and he got in there in a hurry. And it's just like Emilio said all night, we're not just kind of tackling people. We're hitting people. Yeah, this, this is tackle football here in Lockhart, Texas tonight. And this defense is, you know, it's one of those things, you know, if you're going to be in a dog fight, make sure the other dog looks uglier than you. That is exactly right. Here comes the handoff. It's going to be to – he carries that out to about the 49-yard line. That was Lorenzo Puente on the carry. Okay, because I was thinking it was number 11, so I'm glad you <laughs> saw that. I'm having a hard time with my old man vision of seeing these white numbers on the gray shirts. <laughs> Wait till we get to Kennedy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember, I believe, that team's uniform as well. So, the Cortland Zambrano trying to get the fans involved here as they've kind of fallen asleep. Fourth and three. They're going to give it to the same man. He's up the middle. He's got the first down. Across the 50-yard line, down to about the 47, maybe 48. This is going to be their first time inside of Lockhart territory for the offense. Nice run by Puente there as he gets it down to the 47. So they're in our territory, as Emilio said, and this running game has now picked them up and kind of slowed us down. Definitely. We got to step up. We are doing some blitzing, though, so we'll see what happens. They're going, oh, that was procedure. That's going to push them back a few yards. That better be procedure. So as coach is literally th every play – bringing three and four guys in on, on in and out on defense. He is platooning our guys. It is procedure. It will go back to the Travis side of the field at the 48. And you know what, this, and this is the first time that the defense has been out there for longer than three plays. So, you know, they, 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 they're still trying to get into this ball game. Right. You know, even though they made the stops when they needed to, and the three and outs, but you know, when you get into drives that are three, four, five, six play drives, you get your defense out there and start building a, a, a what you call a good defensive game. Lopez gonna roll out right. He's gonna get hit as he throws. Nice job there. That was Jackie Edwards, Jackie Jr. Edwards Jr., the sophomore. Jackie came to play tonight. 624 to go here in the first half. 20 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions are on top. They're, I mean, they're, right now, Travis is moving the ball, but it's not like it's a scary moving the ball. We're right. still in control of this game. They've got the one at their back. That helps as well. Lopez is not a bad quarterback. He just hasn't had time to throw. No, he's not. And we, we talked about whether, with all the graduation of our defensive ends, who was going to step up this year, and they have. So the play is up the middle. They get right back up to midfield. It's going to be about third and two. Third and twelve. Third and tw oh, 12, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought I saw a coach standing over there, and I thought he had the chain. So it looked like, if I read that right, number 74, Seth Smith, the sophomore, making the tackle. So third and 12, man in motion. They're going to pitch it out. That's to the, uh, Isaac and Wright, and Isaac Wright gets hammered. Seth Smith just pancaked him down. I didn't see who grabbed him, though. It was Eddie Tukar who got into the backfield made the initial contact to slow the ball carrier down, and Seth Smith was right up there just to clean up the play. Seth Smith likes to hit you hard. Seth is a big boy, and Seth Smith is just a sophomore. 
Spot. We got going back, Adam Romero. Yes, and, Romero. Uh, Jesus Aldana back at their own 10 yard line. Angel, Angel uh, Lamas is kicking. So Adam Romero has great hands and he is a pretty quick guy. He has some awesome basketball moves as a point guard, so we'll see how that works and translates into punting. And we've already seen Aldana carry the ball. You know, you give him an open space, and he gets that speed going, and you're not going to stop this young man. And the funny thing is, the guy that used to be back there, Daquan Ellison, now he's getting a chance to take a breather. Exactly, and that's one of the big things that, like I said, we talked about. Now with the numbers that Lockhart has, you could get your key players to take a break and sit back and get the relax, you know, get get their strength back and rest up. So when they go out there, you know, they're not out there playing all four quarters back to back with plays and stuff. But you know, this it's just a great coaching job by Coach Herman and his coaching staff to be able to move these guys in and out to get their rest when they need it. Well, we're getting ready to do the punt now after we had the little delay there. It's fourth and 17, five ten to go here in the first half. Twenty to nothing. Lockhart Lions on top. We're in that new district and that new schedule. Here comes the punt. Two car just about blocked it again. Aldana with it, he takes it to the right side. He's gonna get caught from behind though. He's got not getting very far. And they're gonna get a horse collar. Definitely. They're gonna get a horse collar tackle. So he got to the 19 yard line, but that's gonna get a few more yards tacked onto it. You cannot grab a guy around the shoulder pads and throw him down. And he had his hands Deep in the back, <laughs> like he was tucking his shirt in for him. But, you know, great call by the referee. He, he saw it from about 20 yards away, and you couldn't miss that. So we're just waiting for everything to get deciphered here, and then they're going to move the, the sticks a little further. We're just going to find out where it's going to be spotted. So they will be marking fit. That should be out to about the 34-yard line then, or thereabouts, because he was at the 19. We'll see how they do. I'm just guesstimating. Again, we had a predictions before the game, and um, I'm liking my 44-6, to although I don't know that they're going to score on us, to be honest, with you, the way things are going right now. So here we go. I, I did not 64. I did see his number. That is David Solero, the junior center. They're going to hand it off straight up the middle, and that is number 30. That is num He is Noah Garcia, the sophomore. The sophomores are coming out strong. Noah Garcia right up the middle for a first down, out to the 45-yard line. Great run by Noah Garcia. He just, well, once again, even as a sophomore, the patience that he had to let his blockers get in front of him, create the blocks himself by moving around and just shooting straight forward once he got past his blockers to get the extra five yards. David Solero, the junior center, handoff up the middle, and there's the, the little bull, baby little bull's head, uh, brother. Getting crossed midfield all the way down to the 41 yard line. So there's Jordan Garcia, another sophomore, burying his way down the field, putting his name into the books. So we have a first and 10. The ball is at the 42 of Travis. So the two sophomores running straight up the middle and showing that they mean business tonight. Definitely. And once again, you can see the offensive line creating these holes for these running backs to go. It doesn't matter who's getting the ball. You could get the ball and run right through those holes yourself. I don't know if I could run, but I'd get through them anyways. <laughs> so there's a handoff. He's up the middle. Garcia. Garcia. Was that Garcia again? It was Garcia. No, it was not. Who was that? It was David Garcia. David Garcia. Well, there's all kinds of Garcias running the ball tonight. <laughs> David Garcia with the run this time. He's a senior. He got down to the 33, about a yard shy, a yard shy, yard shy of a first down. So Solero brings the team to the line. Slot T. They're going to one yard for a first down. They're going to give it up the middle. Nice run up the middle by number 30, Noah Garcia, the sophomore. And he's just running over people right now. This isn't even fair with him running the ball. As they're going to get it all the way down to about the 20, let's see, 27-yard line, 28-yard line. So, again, 
What do we have? We've had five or six guys touch the ball, and all of them are running well. Most definitely, and not to mention the last three, well, last two that have carried the ball are all sophomores, so this gives you an idea of what we Lion fans have to look forward to for the next three years. Here we go again. They're going to hand it off. Oh, no, it's Garza keeps it around the left side. He's going to stutter step, get around the corner, and dives for about a seven-yard gain. What a great stutter step by Garza. Jaden Garza has had some miscues, but for a first game starting, I think he's playing fantastic. Most definitely. And, you know, those things, he'll be able to get those worked out by the time we hit district play. And, uh, you know, it's it's – it's great playing time for him. As we saw last year, Jaden Garza was more was used mostly as a running back. There possibly an injury? Yes. That's what I thought. I saw the guys go to their knees. Let's take a real quick break. We're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back at Lockhart Stadium on a handoff real quick, and I'm going to let well, hang on just a second. The play was we weren't even ready for it when it came back. It looked like it was number 15, and that is uh, Garcia, Jordan Garcia. He was dropped for a loss. It's going to be about third and seven. Did you have something you wanted to go with there? Uh, no, I was just giving you a tell. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Because I was looking down. I had to. I was sending our buddy from uh, KMAX Sports, Chuck Lakata, a message, and I looked up, and, oh, my gosh, we're back and ready to go. Here we go. The handoff is to uh, no. I thought they was giving this offense. I tell you what, they are faking the ball well. I thought they gave the ball to number 42, which is uh, Darius Spruill, but they actually went with uh, number 32, David Garcia. And that, that's two plays in a row that they lost yardage on right there. Yeah, we're we're now at fourth and nine. So what looked like maybe a scoring drive is going to end up hopefully a scoring drive, but it's we're kind of getting out of reach here. And once again, Lockhart. Coach Herman finds himself in the area of the field to where he's comfortable with going on it on fourth and nine with the defense that he's had so far in this ball game against the Travis Rebels offense. Well, and I kind of agree with what you had to say. I mean, why kick when you've been playing the way you've yeah. been playing? And I just said, you got the win at coming right at you, too. And, uh, you know, the, the field goal kicker did miss an extra point. But, you know, this is his first year as a varsity football player doing the field goal kicking duties. As I mentioned before, the great Juan Ocampo, Mr. Automatic, I remember seeing his first game as a varsity player at uh, Reagan, and he missed every single extra point with the exception of one. And uh, the next game against Crockett here in Lockhart, it's when Automatic started tearing it up, and you, he rarely missed one during the season. or you know, And if he, did, if he did miss any, he was kicking 45 yard field goals against the win. We're still late enough distance with just the wind pushing it out that we saw a couple of times. But, you know, in time, this field goal kicker, he's going to, you know, once he gets his ears wet, you know, he'll be ready to kick just like the great Juan Ocampo did. Well, and Alfredo James, the guy we're talking about, is a sophomore. So that's got to be enough pressure right there. But the thing is, to be honest, I didn't see the first one he missed, but the second one, was a tor it was a horrible snap. I mean, Tukar had to – I mean, he put that way over the uh, – Eddie. Edwards head, yeah. he had to get up and go get it, and then by then it was too late, and the kicker had to grab it and run. So. And that showed you the great hands of uh, Jackie Edwards to be able to hold on to that football too. Right, so fourth and nine, tight formation. They're going to roll out right with Garza. He throws it. It's caught. Stay at Sosa. Is that Sosa? I didn't see who caught it. That's what I'm looking for. Who was it? It was a big guy, number 30-something. <laughs> Just turn <laughs> around. I, number 32, will we have a third? No way. I, Richard Moya. Moya, all Richard right. Moya. Richard Moya got, it was number 39 with the touchdown catch, and that was a fantastic catch. So with 58 seconds to go here in the first half, it's 26 to nothing. Here comes the snap. 
the kick, and it's good. He buried that one. He put his entire leg into that one. So with 58 seconds to go here in the first half, your Lockhart Lions are up 27 to nothing. And you know what, Richard Moya, I, you know what, it, it sends chills through me because I remember coaching this young man in uh, my first year as a Major League Baseball coach for the Lockhart Little League. I remember coaching him, and to see him score this touchdown, you know, it, it sends chills through my body because, you know, this young man has worked his butt off, not only in the game of baseball where he only played one season, but throughout his entire career, he's been focusing his talent on football and this this young man is only a sophomore too as well. So, did, what was that yardage on that touchdown? Twenty-two yard touchdown. That's pass. what I thought. Twenty-two yard reception. So that is the first varsity touchdown pass I think that Garza has had. Yes, it is. It is. And uh, that scoring drive took three minutes, fifty-nine seconds off the clock, which was capped off by a twenty-two yard touchdown pass from Jaden Garza to Richard Moya. to cap off a seven play drive for the Lockhart Lions. A total of 66 yards on the drive. Well, here comes the kick from it. Eduardo Ponce, nice kick. Number nine, Number nine Isaac Wright with it. He's gonna come around the left side. He's gonna get caught from behind. And, and that hard. Oh, and that was, the guy that got him first was George Renteria, the junior. George Renteria has always been awesome on special teams, and he got down there that time and made a nice play. Yes, and down there to make the hard hit once again is Noah Garcia, the sophomore. And, man, Scott, I got to tell you, these sophomores that we're calling out now, they're making hits like this and running the ball. Lockhart is going to be looking scary for the next, next couple of years. And that's exciting for us because – you know, it builds us up as well also, and Lockhart has a 27 to nothing lead with 50 seconds left to go here in the first half. Well, it has been amazing so far. They're going to go back to their spread offense. There's a timeout called. Austin Travis is going to call a timeout. They got the wind at their back. Surely they're going to be looking for bombs all the way this half, hoping for something spectacular to happen. Most definitely. And once again, as we go, like I, lock, I like to call it the Coach Herman theory, you Score before the halftime. You kick off to start the game. You score before half. Get the ball to start the second half and score again, which gives you a 14-point swing if you score two touchdowns. So, I mean, with 49 seconds, is Lockhart going to get the ball back? Uh, we'll see. But the way this Lockhart Lions defense, I wouldn't put it past them to, for them to be able to pick off a pass because, you know, Travis wants to go into the to halftime with at least a score. So here they go. I want to give a real quick shout out to Chuck Licata from KMAX Sports. Hello, Chuck. Lopez rolls out right. He throws, but it bounces off the ground. It's incomplete. It looked like he was trying to throw it there to Isaac Wright, but it falls incomplete. 42 seconds to go, second and 10. Great pressure by the defensive line to be able to get back into the backfield and push the quarterback out of his comfort zone to make the errant throw to his receiver. Looked like he had two receivers in the spot. One reached up for it. It just went out over his outstretched arms, but just short hopped it to the receiver that was standing behind him. So we got two receivers spread out to the right, one to the left, a H back and a tail back with Lopez at quarterback in the shotgun formation. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to roll out right. He runs, runs past Sanchez. Sanchez comes from behind, almost made the tackle. Two cars there to finish him off. And also Alex Sosa with the tackle. So Tucar and Sosa decided to introduce themselves to Lopez. A great play. That's going to be about <laughs> third and six. 22 seconds and counting. I don't even know if they're going to try to run another play. They might. I would. I would throw a bomb and see what happens. I mean, if we intercept it, you're down 34 instead of 27. Yeah. Just give it a shot. Two receivers to the fine. left, one to the right, seven seconds left, but I'm not real sure they're going to run a play. Nope, right. they did. They snapped. It's on the ground. They're going to throw it out quick. And the play is not going anywhere. Adam Romero is there to make the tackle. <coughs> so that will end your first half on the Adam Romero tackle. Halftime score, the Lockhart Lions 27. The Austin Travis Rebels 0. You are listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Austin. 
The Vibe Magazine. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons, 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body, we won't steer you wrong. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain or neck pain, call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Right now, the Austin Travis Rebels band is on the field. <clears throat> we're going to keep this uh, – we're going to let uh, Emilio go through, like, scores and, and stats and his thoughts and things like that. And then when it's time for the Lockhart Roaring Band to get on here, we're going to listen to them in their entirety. So I'm going to hand it off after I give Emilio my thoughts. I thought our offensive line was fantastic, and they're led there – by the usuals, but the center. And everything revolves around the center. David Solero, this junior, he's the man who snaps the ball. He's the guy who gets him to the line. I think our line should be the MVP right now just by the way they've been blocking. But we've had like six or seven running backs who have gained big yardage tonight. And J Jaden Garza, junior, first start as a starting quarterback at varsity, has played fantastic. Our defense, unbelievable. The defense, like you said, the quickness, Unbelievable. So with that being said, I'm going to let Emilio take over. All right, let's get a quick Meitler Storage game break for the District 14-5A uh, Division II roundup as Alamo Heights is up 20-17 to with 2.46 left to go in the second quarter. Uvalde is down 28 to nothing to Eagle Pass with 1.12 left in the second quarter. Of course, here in Lockhart High School is a Lockhart Lions 27 to nothing over the Travis Rebels at halftime. Drippin' Springs finally takes the lead over Tyvee at home, 21 to 17 with 146 left to go in that second quarter. Kennedy High School having a rough time at Divine War, War Horses as they're finding themselves down 21 to nothing with 203 left to go in the second quarter. Medina Valley looking like the long trip is uh, really taking its toe as number four La Vega in the 4A district and 4A division football. The Pirates are up 19 to eight at halftime. Bandera Bulldogs is playing at San Antonio Memorial Minutemen, and it's knotted up six to six with 3:20 left to go in the in the first quarter. And as I mentioned, Bernie Champion played last night against the Stephen Falcons and found themselves on the losing end of a 21 to seven ball game. And uh, I like to echo what what uh, Scott was saying about the defense. This is probably the quickest defense that I've seen as my time with the headsets on that you know under coach herman's uh under the six years of coach herman's uh, reign here but golly they, they're flying to that football and there's a lot of pass plays and i'll take nothing away from travis rebels you got i mean the lock card line defense front line is doing their job their linebackers are doing their job the cornerbacks are doing their job their safeties are doing their job and what's so beautiful about it is they're all working together as one team and it's amazing to see them flying around the base, the, the, the field, making the tackle. And like I mentioned, when they're making the tackle, they're just not tackling. They're hitting these runners. They're hitting these receivers. They're hitting the quarterback. And they're making a huge impact. And, uh, and uh, if you ask me, they're creating a huge – they're making a big statement in this ball game as a defensive unit. Now, flip that over to the offensive side. You know, it's – they have – They've been able to move the ball at will. They have had a couple of mistakes where they've lost a couple of yards here, a couple of yards there. But this offense is so it's so powerful. The front line has been doing their jobs. But the quickness and the speed that this offense, that the running backs have, has created 
a big problem for the Travis Rebels defense because they're unable to keep up with these runners because of the huge holds this offensive line is, is uh, holding up, is making. And like I said, right now the entire offensive line for the Lockhart Lions should be the player of the game because it doesn't matter who's running the football, they're creating the whole, creating these holes for everybody, not just you know Daquan Ellison or the Little Bull or uh, Jesus Saldana and, and the rest of the ball carriers that have gotten the ball today, which I see a total of eight carriers have, have totaled the ball. But each one of those runners, that offensive line has created huge holes. And to the offensive line, it's like, we don't care who's running the ball. We just got our job to do, and they've been doing their job to the T, and it has shown, you know, Lockhart has totaled 21 carries in this first half for 149 yards of rushing. Now, you know, it could have been more, but you got to remember, Lockhart had that one drive of two yards, which they moved it back because they had to get more rushing yards for yeah, that exactly. team. Yeah, exactly. So, but, I mean, 21, 21 carries for 149 yards, they've only ran 24 plays this first half. And you count the two incompletions, and then you throw in that one touchdown pass that uh, Jaden Garza to Richard Moya, the 22-yard touchdown pass, which was the last score the Lions had. I mean, 20, 24-25 plays, you know, for the slot T offense at halftime, that's way less than the, I'm pretty sure what Coach Herman is wanting to chew up clock, chew up yards. But with an offensive line like this, you got to keep going with what you got. And it's – it's amazing to watch this game today and how the offense is working, how they're clicking together, and how the defense is clicking together on all cylinders. And, you know, it's amazing. And I, I wait to see how much this defense is going to improve even further and further as they get into district play, which is going to be beginning in three weeks from now. Well, one thing I want to do, and it's not to take away from anything that Emilio is saying or anything, but – what happens with us here in Lion Country Broadcast Network is we have to have sponsorships. We have yet to get a lot of the commercials uh, to us about this year's sponsors. So some people that I'm looking at real quick, Farm Bureau and Mike Tate. Mike Tate was my buddy in baseball. He helped me do play-by-play. -play. Mike Tate is a great man, a great leader in this community. Uh, Farm Bureau Insurance, he's a good, solid uh, person to, uh, you know, just take your business to. I really appreciate him and what he's done with us. Um, another one is Ryan Drywall we have. We have State Farm as well. And then we have Angela Hernandez. These are people that we have as sponsors that um, that we don't have commercials for yet, but we want you to be to know that we know that you're doing what you're doing for these kids. So again, Farm Bureau, we want to give a shout out to you. It looks like we want to go Ryan Drywall, State Farm, and Angela Hernandez. You folks, we really appreciate what you have done for our program and for these kids. Um, other commercials we have, we're actually using commercials from several years prior so we're still waiting for the time that we get our commercials in and uh and then we'll be running those for you and you'll have them in your entirety so now we have this this compadre that's just walked in <laughs> and larry, I, larry rodriguez and i gotta say in. whether you love them or hate them you have to listen to them if you're coming to law Cart line football <laughs> and, and we got larry who put on the headset come on put the bike right can, up can, there can you turn, hear me turn is the on. question turn on. Right. So Larry Rodriguez <laughs> is our PA announcer. He's he's taken over and uh, uh, this year, and he's also uh, a lot with the finances that go on with the Booster Club, and and he is a big guy. If you want to listen to some entertaining baseball, go listen to this guy and his free popcorn stuff. So uh, the only thing I don't like about Larry is that he's a Cubs fan. Oh, I'm, a Card go. I'm a Cardinals fan. A but you know, fan But anyways, we're going to let Larry talk and just kind of tell us about him and the Booster Club and everything else. Well, yeah. I tell you what, the, um, the motto this year is Pride is Alive. Show your pride is alive uh, by sponsoring a family sponsor starting at $75. If you have a business – and you want to promote your business and gain exposure. We're roughly getting about 20,000 people uh, to see your sign through the, throughout the entire year. They start at 250 and work their way all up to 5,000 bucks uh, if you're a big spender. But if you're not, it is what it is. Try to help out as best you possibly can. Uh, but let's talk about those Lions. <laughs> all, right, all right, Larry, this is your first season as a PA guy. 
what are your thoughts of what you've seen so far in this first half? I've seen some intensity on the defensive side. They've got zero goose egg. They probably gained, what, 10 yards on us the whole, the whole game? And I tell you what, that Ellison boy, Kwani, is something to watch on the backfield. <laughs> Golly, he's got some nifty moves. He goes up and down, north and south, east and west. It's hard to, it's hard to contain him. I love watching him run. It's definitely exciting to see what the Coach Herman has done to his Lockhart Lions, especially the defense this year. I mean, as you mentioned, as we've talked about it up here, these guys, these young Lions, they're not just making tackles. They're, you know, just like I said, you know, if, if, if you're going to be in a dog fight, make sure the dog you get in a fight with is uglier than you. Yeah, exactly. So, that number 35, Alex Sosa, boy, he's a beast in the middle. Number six is showing some serious leadership. Wow, what what intensity out there! I'm very I'm very proud, very happy with what I'm seeing. Yes, How most, about you? Most, oh, I've been excited to see this defense ever since uh, Scott and I were up here, as we watched the the <coughs> last scrimmage they had against Pflugerville Weiss, and you know, you got guys up there like uh, Eddie Tukar. Wow, what an you athlete. know, and I mean, and, golly, I mean, you can name the whole roster right now. You know, you got Aiden Hernandez, Noah Garcia. I mean, Jesus Aldana with his runs around the outside. George Renteria, yep. Daquan Ellison, and you know. Well, look at my yellow. I've never had this much yellow in the first game before in my life of names I'm calling all the time. That's a lot of yellow. Hey, how about that nice catch by Richard Moya? <laughs> wow, that was incredible. I, yeah, I was yes. just telling just I a like few. That. Yeah, just a few years ago, I was coaching that young man in in uh, baseball for the Lockhart Little League, and you know what? And I was telling you, what's scary is a lot of these names that we're calling, especially late in the second quarter, they're sophomores. Yeah, they're, they're sophomores. They, they got all this year and next the next two years if they don't leave. That's but right. If they, That's right. They the got, future, we got them all, yes. ladies and gentlemen, the future is bright. And don't forget the junior high kids coming up. We've got two fantastic running backs that you will see, one by the name of Sean McKinney and the other one by Deontay Jackson. That Sean runs like old Earl Campbell did. Yeah. Deontay Jackson, I'm going to start nicknaming him Smooth because I promise you this, he has a lot of Eric Dickerson in him. Yeah. Oh, good he, gosh. Had, he had and an he older brother would, that yeah. was a beast back in the day, and you know who I'm talking about. Eric Dickerson, that's yeah. a name there. Yeah, and, and he runs he really just like does, him straight man. up. He, really he does. runs straight up, and but just like Eric Dickerson, he knew when to get down and lay down that boom. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you talk about uh, Sean McKinney. Uh, He's got, he had a bro, older brother years ago, C.J. McKinney, who oh, was an was outstanding quarterback and a running athlete. back for the Lockhart uh, line. Well, his father was a really good athlete yeah. in Lockhart, too, man. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Deontay Jackson. His older brother is Curtis Hawkins. That's Curtis. A, Larry, Larry Ma Curtis. McKelsey just yeah. told me that. Hey. On. Yeah, his <laughs> oldest brother is Curtis Hawkins, man. one of the greats. And, Ooh, man, you know. I promise you that. You didn't want to see him up the middle more than 20 times. <laughs> oh, no. Everybody was just sitting the bench. No, I'm good. Just let him go in the end. Yeah, time. exactly. Yeah. And he was one of those bruisers that, I mean, if you were in front of him, you didn't have to get out of his way because he was going to move you himself. Guys, just to interrupt, not to take anything away, um, one of the uh, Austin Travis kids got hurt at the end of the first half and the ambulance is here to get him and uh, we, we hate seeing that but one of their children got got uh, hit pretty hard in that last series and and he's he's being taken away in an ambulance we don't know who it is or what happened but we just you hate seeing that all right hey quick question to Larry I mean I, I heard you say it uh, I think Scott and I were sitting right there on the sidelines and we had a giggle at it at the junior high game when you were doing the PA over there when am I going to get a Ric Flair? <laughs> <laughs> going to get two claps and a Ric yeah. Flair. Uh, we stood there. We laughed. We're like, hey, you know what? what? <laughs> hey, you know what? i tell you what. I've got, a, I've got a unique story about Ric Flair. Me and my wife bought a house for my son in Lubbock. And uh, we went to a Mexican restaurant. And after we went to a Mexican restaurant, uh, we saw something on a periodical. It said, meet Ric Flair. And we're like, oh, man. It was an hour. After the after our lunchtime that we had had to meet Ric Flair, so I told Amanda because he is one of my heroes that we're going to meet Ric Flair. Well, she kicked and screamed like normal and said, "No, we got to drive six hours back to Lockhart." But I prevailed. I met Ric Flair. <laughs> oh, Not wow. only did I meet Ric Flair, he's opening up a wrestling called Gorilla Mania Wrestling. It's underground wrestling, and I got an interview uh, to actually be an announcer for this. Oh guys. man. 
I thought you were about to say you got an interview to be an actual wrestler. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I would I would have driven a long ways to watch that. I would have. Short, fat, and ugly doesn't yeah. work. And you know what? Yeah. Years ago, you know, a, a good story about the four horsemen. Uh, years ago, I met Tolly Blanchard. Oh, nice. And you know what? And I talked to him. I told him, I, said, I got a question to ask you. He goes, what? He goes, all that stuff y'all talked about with wheeling and dealing, <laughs> private jets, he goes, you know what? He goes, have you ever heard Ric Flair talk? I said, oh, I used to see it all the time, a world-class championship wrestler oh, yeah. and NWA. NWA That's and, right. You That's know, right. and he goes, everything he said was true. <laughs> he goes, we were, we were, after the show, we were heading to Atlantic City or Las Vegas <laughs> in a private jet in limo. A limo as long yeah. as Lockhart. He goes, and <laughs> we would come back that next day for a show and be back out again that night after. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back with you and the PA duties. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you you, you have a, a great inter, uh, personality and, you know, thank a you, good fix you. for, every, you know, to be the next PA. Thank, thank you. But um, what was I, I going to say? That's okay. Well, let me, let me interrupt. <laughs> I tell no, you what, I, I, okay. I how do you, how do you like your duty so far? Oh, I, I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. I've got a fantastic team over there. Toby Velasquez is my spotter. Uh, Paul Anthony Obali is my spotter. I've got my music guy, Eric Garcia. His son is Noah Garcia out there trying to keep the crowd hype. You know, our job this year is to make Coach Herman's job easier, to keep the crowd engaged, fill the seats with as many fans as we possibly can, and again, bring back your pride is alive into Lockhart. Uh, We're doing the best we can. I some of those that. names you mentioned over there cook barbecue oh. really good. <laughs> I hope y'all don't have nothing over there. Y'all holding out from us over here. Tomorrow, Longhorn game, my house. Well, let's just say the name Noah Garcia, a sophomore, two runs of 25 yards. This kid is a sophomore running over people like he's 30 years old and you know it's like a big man against little kids uh, man i tell you what he actually lives across the street from me and i've watched his work ethic he works out and he's not afraid of a little hard work you know he's one of those guys that people navigate towards um, he has a sense of leadership his father really does a good job by preparing him again in order for you to be successful you've got to put the work in in order for it to in order for you to be successful and if you can continue to show by example, everybody else catches on. And Noah's one of those guys that when he's a senior, my friend, watch out. You'll see some Division I scouts out here looking at him. He's a big kid. He's roughly 5'10", weighs about 185 pounds. As a sophomore, and he's built. He's built pretty well. And like I can say a key word. He's a sophomore, so this this young man is going to be growing within the, within these next couple of years and yeah. if he's running like this gosh I like to see him when he's a I hope I'm still around yeah. when he's a when he's a senior he, oh exactly he, he, he's got a little bit of Curtis Hawkins in in him except her, Curtis ran up a little straighter and you know he's got that lean in him and when you got a big fullback that has a lean man it's after a while they don't want to tackle you anymore you know no That's they don't true. and you know what's, what's strange we bring back uh, Sean McKinney and Deontay Jackson it's funny because Sean runs like uh, Curtis Hawkins, and Deontay runs like C.J. McKinney. So I mean, and yeah, yeah. Deontay <laughs> runs like Sean McKinney's older brother, and Sean McKinney runs like Deontay's older brother. Oh wow! <laughs> so I mean, it's like you well, know, mixed match. But you know what? And then you also throw in Lawrence Castillo in oh there. Oh my God! What and an athlete! Golly! Yeah. And you know, you you got some they, you got some talented running backs that are be coming up from the junior high level and not just that you got some big linemen as the eighth grades and i took a look at the seventh graders too they're not too they're not too shabby on guys that are big you, over you, there either you know what i i'm going to intervene here and i'm going to talk about the freshman class now you have the a train that is a massive individual and i tell you what it is very very hard to block him and i promise you I, and I'm, I'll, I'll put it out there i think by the end of this year he'll be on varsity as a freshman he is a tough, tough kid, Andrew Lacomia. He really is, man. That that freshman team has a, I mean, has a superior defense. You know, led by number 42, uh, Javier Cifuentes. Man, I tell you what, that kid made some ex extremely good tackles yesterday. Yeah. You know, they played against the Travis JV or freshman or what have you, and you know, it was a tough game, but we we fought hard and ended up winning. It was it was good. It was good to watch. The future is bright in Lockhart, Texas. It definitely is. It definitely well, is. Getting away from football, I want to talk about a guy who is a legend in this town. 
Yeah. Scott Hempen still. Oh, my goodness. This no. guy's cross-country teams are driving all over the United States and doing well, and they won their own meet or to, uh, they at their classification or whatever just this last weekend or the weekend before last. And he has done such a fantastic job. Doesn't matter how many kids he graduates. Here comes the next class of kids, and he just he just rotates them in and out. And that man is a coaching legend. He Most does definitely. such a great well, job. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I'm close to home with cross country in Lockhart, Texas. My brother Tony Sosa was a phenomenal cross country runner. I'm not going to say he's the originator of it, uh, but, you know, Tony didn't lose a race in junior high. When he was a freshman, they ran and went to UTSA and had an actual freshman cross-country race. He won the freshman race, would have won the JV race, and won fourth on varsity. They immediately <coughs> moved him up. My brother Tony and his crew would run 100 miles a week. I mean, they had real dedication to the point where, again, it becomes infectious. And when it becomes infectious, everybody wants to be part of a winning team. Coach Hippenstiel has instilled, you know, straight pride, you know, straight discipline and hard work and what you get out of it. And people bought on. And they Most definitely. On, right? And you know what? If, if Scott, myself, and you, Larry, were to get on to Coach Hippenstiel's cross-country we'd, we'd team, we'd, we'd probably be winning state right now. <laughs> He'd have us winning state. That's how good he, coach he is. Well, <laughs> and then, you know, and then they get away from coach. Now I'm going to go to the other side, volleyball. <laughs> Our girls are in the area, and the Austin Statesmen, they're ranked fourth in Class 5A in volleyball, and they're just looking great. I'm yeah. going to tell you one thing. I was utterly and thoroughly impressed by Mrs. Ruggio. Uh, her first name, I'm not a – Abby. Abby Ruggio. Abby Ruggio is a fantastic volleyball player. Along with the other girls on there, they, I'm telling you, they get to position. And, I mean, Ruggio is just like the quarterback on on the volleyball team. She is incredible. They played against Sam Marcus and I actually watched them. And um, Sam Marcus had a girl that jumped out of the gym and would spike the ball straight down. And Abby was the best volleyball player on that court. And that girl was an incredible athlete. But I tell you what, she's got some wonderful things going on. I know uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Krenz, Callie Krenz, is a fantastic athlete as well. Yep. Uh, you've got uh, Carly uh, Caldillo. Yes. Oh, my God, she's a leader out there. I mean, you don't have to be the tallest person in the world to be the best. I can promise you that. So All right. We're going to step away yep. because now we have the Lion Band. The Roaring Band is out here, and we're going to let you listen to them in their entirety because that's part of our gig. Most definitely. And this is the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some beautiful sounds from your Lockhart Lion Roaring Band. Thank you, Larry. You guys have a great night. All right, you too. We give you the sound of color.
Please welcome to the field your 2018-2019 Walker High School Lioness. Under the direction of Ms. Taylor Seymour, the lioness are led on the field by Captain Alexia Bryant, co-captain Anita Davila, senior lieutenant Precious Garcia, junior lieutenant Brianna Gonzalez, baseball officer Chelsea Rodriguez, social officer Ella Hurd. This week, the Lionettes will be performing a kick routine to the Earth, Wind, and Fire hit September. Seven seven five two nine. Edward Martinez, congratulations. Please take your ticket to one of our boosters with pit crew on the back of their shirt. Thanks to all of you who purchased tickets and support our Roaring Line Band program.
actually in the press box. Lori Davis, congratulations! Hello Americans, Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted Best Chiropractor and Best Chiropractor's Office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. We're back here at Lockhart Stadium where both teams are waiting to come back on because of the injury at the end of the first half. There's been a kind of a delay to start the second half. That's kind of why we've been off kilter here with commercials and whatnot. Not to mention, I can't wait until everybody that is new to the area and new to the press box figures out that we are not the PA building and everybody's wanting us to call off numbers and finding lost phones and they keep opening our door and asking us questions and um, and so it's been kind of hectic trying to get them to not talk while we're trying to talk. And, and so we may have to put a lock on the door or something or just say stay out, do not disturb or something like that. I don't know. We were going to try to get uh, Lee Raspberry, the head maintenance man, to come up here and talk. But he must have got hung up somewhere. So we'll catch him another time. But we have about five minutes to go before the second half starts. At least that's what the clock says. The teams are kind of warming up down there. 
and I'm not real sure. I, I've never really seen this kind of delay before. Um, maybe it was the the injury of the kid or whatnot, but uh, but here we are with about 4:50 to go in the in the halftime, and I'm just going to let Emilio put his two cents worth in, and we'll get things going here. Well, uh, just real quick, I, I thought it was cute. We had a little girl or two out there talking on the crowd mic. Come to find out it was Coach Curry's daughters as they were, I guess, practicing American Idol or something out there on the mic. I guess they didn't realize, and I, I said, ladies, could you please not talk in the mic? And they were literally holding it, and Coach Curry's wife said, oh, I'm sorry. And she turned around and talked to him. But that was cute. Well, they rang the bell. Yeah, another <laughs> ringing the bell. But uh, – I, you know, I'm just sitting here while I'm watching, and I, I talked about our basketball players that are on the team. We've got two of them on the hands line up there in the front. In Devin Clark and Adam Romero up front. We're getting ready to start the second half. We are receiving the ball with a 27 to nothing lead. And I'm looking at the roster, number 95, so I don't know who that is, is the kicker because he's not on the roster. Zambrano drops it. He's going to pick it up. He's going to bring it out. He's to the 5, to the 10, to the 15. He's out to the 16-yard line where he gets gang-tackled, which whistles should be blowing. So 
Something I did not expect Zambrano ever to do, and that's drop a ball. He's got such good hands. Another one of the basketball players does a good job. He was about five yards deep, brought it out to, it looks like, the 16-yard line where they will start first and ten. We'll see if they're going to go with the starting unit, which I'm sure they will, or if he's going to try to give some of these younger kids who have done a great job tonight chances at the ball. Oh, I do want to give a shout-out. I understand that Randy Fry had to step away, so now we have Chuck the Iceman Lakata as our QA. I, th I thought these headphones got a little bit cooler. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, and, of course, Chuck and I have an inside bet about uh, something that was going to happen in this game, and I have a feeling I'm going to lose to Chuck Lakata in that aspect. <laughs> That's his, between he and I, though. Love so, you, buddy. Here we go. <laughs> Slot T, tight formation. They're going with the starters. Jaden Garza, under center. Going to hand it off. Going to pop it out the outside. Oh, didn't get much of anything. And that was Daquan Ellison. He didn't get much. And it looks like number 65. That was Victor Leon on the tackle. So 11.30 to go here in the third quarter. 27 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions are on top. Number 29, that is Pavel Rivero. He is bringing in the play. You know, great off defensive stop to start the second half off for the Travis Rebels. You know, they might have looked at something in the halftime that might work for them. So here's another handoff around the – oh, no, it was up the middle. Is that the Quan again? I can't tell. Look like a Jesus Aldana. No, that was Daquan. Daquan once again. again, and these, they're they're starting to key on him. Um, number fifty on the tackle, and they don't have a number fifty on their roster, so I have no idea who that young man is. They are some thick kids up front on their line. Neither team really in a big hurry. Oh, they called a penalty on them, so we're going to be moving the sticks. I wondered why everything stopped. I didn't see any flags though. So it must have been encroachment because they gave us five. Second and four. Got Devin Clark, 6'5", wide receiver to the right side. They're going to go around the left side with Aldonia. He's out to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, out to the 50, to the 45, down to the 43-yard line. What a run by Aldonia. Great run by Aldonia. Once I, I, just like I said, once this young man gets around the outside, with this blocking that, that this offensive line is giving him, all he has to do is beat a couple of guys and almost almost taking it to the house. So one thing I've noticed, and I've already, again, I'm not a genius, but every time they put Devin Clark on the right side at 6'5", the, the basketball player, they go left with the run, and it's always wide open because they're so worried about Devin Clark and his height over yes. here. Yes. So here we go again. It's going to hand off up the middle to Daquan Ellison. He gets gang tackled, but he got about five before he had seven guys fall on him. 10-25 and counting here in the third quarter. Offensive line doing a pretty good job as we're getting about five to six yards a clip. And like, like we've talked about all night long, honestly, offensive player of the game, the entire offensive line. I'd have to go with that right now at this point because they've done an amazing job. And like we said, it doesn't matter who's carrying the ball. <laughs> They're creating huge holes for anybody. How about this Isaiah Samaripa, the junior? He's huge, and he's running over people. Yeah, his older brother Lorenzo plays for the Lions. Throw it out to Daquan on the left side. Oh, no, that wasn't. That was not Aldana. Daquan. That was Aldana. He makes a nice catch on the outside. He runs about four more yards after the catch, and we get a first down. Nice job by Garza. Quick pitch out on there. Nice pass. Had a lot of mustard on it. I don't know if uh, uh, Garza ever played baseball, but he has the arm of a shortstop. <laughs> Actually, that was more of a backwards pass right there, so it's going to be considered a run. So first and 10, we're down to about the 28-yard line. Lockhart's looking good. So in other words, it was just a long handoff. Exactly. <laughs> but a great pass nonetheless. Da David Solero, the center, brings him to the line. Two guys to the left. They're going to give it to Daquan Ellison up the right side. He's going to run straight up the middle. A nice run following the same old guys. Looked like this time it was number 58. Alex Vasquez, the senior, was who he ran behind that time. He also had Isaiah Samaripa in front of him as well. Those are some guys I'd run behind. Yes, great play calling by uh, Coach Brian Herman. They lined up in the same exact formation. With two receivers to the to the left side, one stacked behind the one one receiver, 
this time, instead of throwing out there to the left side, they gave the ball to Daquan Ellison, which, com which created some confusion on the defensive front. Adam Romero and Aldana on the left, on the right side this time. They're going to give it to Daquan Ellison down the left side. He jumps over the guy, and he's going to get another first down. So, Mr. First Down, Daquan Ellison moves the sticks again. This time, he went Superman over the top of a guy. And once again, same formation on the opposite end of the field, running uh, running away from the two set two receivers on the set on the set side. So, you know, it's it creates a huge hole that these offensive linemen are are exploiting on the on this uh, travel rebel defense. Who needs a spread offense when we've got two passes already this year <laughs> and it's still the first game? Garza's in trouble. Oh, fumble! They're going to pick it up and they're going to take it the distance, and nobody going to stop this guy. I don't see the jersey number, but we will hear shortly because they have the 42. Number 42, Mark Martinez picked up the fumble. Garza got hammered, dropped the ball, and they picked up the fumble, and they took it to the house. Mm. So that's what, about a at least a 70, 76-yard touchdown run on a fumble recovery. Hey, uh even though they may be up 27 to nothing or 27 to 6 now, you know it's got to eat at Cole Terman because this offense has been running so well, and this is some of the mistakes that he has talked about. You know, luckily the Lions have a huge lead right now, but when you when we get into the district, we get against uh, Alamo Heights and uh, Tyvee and and uh, Bernie Champion. These are little mistakes that you cannot make. You got we got to finish out drives like this. And it it looked like uh, Ortiz was the one that made the extra point, and that was good. So it's now 27-7 with 7.51 to go here in the third quarter. Well, the offense hasn't been able to do much, but the defense came up big on this drive and was able to, you know, it looked like Lockhart was getting their way, getting their way, but one little, one little costly mistake opened up the door for this defense, and it was a quick scoop for a TD on a fumble. So with 7.51 left to go here in the third quarter after the extra point, which was good, it scores Lockhart Lions 27, Travis Rebels 7. Well, you know, and again, Coach Herman got to be a genius. You go out and pick up three basketball players, and all three of these guys will start varsity this year. They're all seniors. They're all athletic as all get out, and all three of them have been big in this game tonight. They have. They definitely have. So here they go kicking off to us. We'll see what happens. It's a line drive kick, and they're just going to knee it. Wow. 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 Bad mistake. I'm not sure what that was all about, but we downed it. Zambrano downs it. I don't. I think it was like a, maybe the five. I'm not real sure what that one was about. But they're not marking oh, it they, as a five. He's, they're saying... He was saying he fur caught it, so they're going to give it to us at the 25. Oh, that is right. That is the new rule. I forgot about this rule. So the, the, the downing of it inside the 10, we're bringing it out to the 25. That is a new rule to try to keep the, the kick returners from getting hurt. I believe it is a college rule as well as Texas follows the college rules. Well, that's one of the th good things that the UIO has implemented uh, for player safety. Well, now there's a five-yard penalty on the Lockhart Lions, which Some is going to take it back. I think they said delay a game. Boy, all kinds of craziness. I mean, Lockhart was moving, and all of a sudden a fumble, and, and now we don't even know what's going on right now. <laughs> Coach is not happy. He's got the headset off. And he's just going to call timeout. Yes. You know, and that's a good thing to, for him to call timeout, especially after the fumble <coughs> that they had on the last drive and the confusion that they've had to start off this drive. You know, he wants to make sure that his lines are going to be up and ready to go. Well, and here's the problem. The quarterback was not on the field. <laughs> so well, That could have been it, too. <laughs> so here, here's the issue, though. We got a 27-0 lead at half. Maybe a little complacency's kind of stepped in. Uh, he's going to get him, try to get him refocused now. 
and hopefully that's going to spark them up and we'll get back into this ball game. One play should not determine the outcome of this no, game. No, definitely Because not. we've played so well up till now. 7.48 to go here in the third quarter, 27-7 Lockhart. Uh, still got a great crowd tonight. One thing that's kind of been notorious here at Lockhart is when the score is lopsided one way or the other, people tend to leave. I'd like to state out there, come on, stay here for the full game. End of round, nice run there from left to right. He's out to about the 25, gets up to the original line of scrimmage. I'll find out who had the carry, and that was Aldana, as he has, again, another good run. That uh, looks like Spencer Nelson, the senior, is going to bring in the play. They're saying that that put him over 100 yards rushing for the day. I don't know that that's correct because. Actually, I got him at 94 yards. Ah, gotcha. Day. Here comes Daquan. Daquan says, no, it's my turn for a first down. Daquan goes straight up the middle of the field and he gets 10 yards. No, he gets 13 yards on the carry. And again, the offensive line is giving him just what he needs for a hole, and he's exploding. And I've always said about the Ellison boys, if you catch them, they're, they're not big guys. You can bring them down, but you've got to catch them first. And with that run, Daquan Ellison hits the century mark for 13 carries for 106 yards. So the ball is first and 10 at the 39-yard line of Lockhart. Tight formation, slot T, man in motion. Right up the gut it goes, Daquan Ellison. He's going to get out close to another first down. He's got nine yards on the carry. And not even running into the backside of one of his own teammates slowed him down. So I guess it was an eight-yard carry. But the funny thing about it, I laugh every time I have to say this, that Daquan Ellison is our fullback. How many fullbacks do you know that are built like that <laughs> and that can run like that? Not too many. And it's funny that he gets most of his yards straight up the gut. And this is not a big guy. Here he goes again down the left side. He breaks free for about another six, maybe it's gonna close be to six. Good enough for another first down. Like you said, just about with every carry he's had, it's uh, totaled up to at least a first down. This has been a quick third quarter. We're down just under six minutes to go, 27 to seven. First and 10 at the Austin Travis 47-yard line. Number 28, Caleb Maris is bring. He's a senior. He's bringing in the play tonight. It'll be David Solero who will bring him up to the line of scrimmage. He's the center. Offensive line doing a fantastic job. Tight formation, man in motion. Hand up to Daquan Ellison. They got him this time. He's going nowhere. They had four guys all over him. He does. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage. If it did, it was a great effort to get back to the line of scrimmage because he was hit right around the 58-yard line, was able to spin away to get it back to the original line of scrimmage for second down and 10. That was Cameron Kraft Cannon out of Travis. He was one, the guy that had the surgery last year. He's returned from that. He's supposed to be the stalwart on their, on their offensive line and defensive line. He proved why there. Did a great job. So now we've got Adam Romero, point guard of the basketball team, out split out right. They're going to give it around to Aldana again, and he's kind of in trouble, but he is going to get something out of it. He didn't. He didn't come up empty-handed. He picked up about four on the carry. They always run away from the, the split guy on the outside. It's worked for them already so far in this ball game. It just they didn't pick up the amount of yards that Aldonio usually gets when he hits that outside. Great containment for the outside linebacker of the Travers Rebel defense to keep Aldonio from sprinting outside. So it's third and eight. We've got Devin Clark on the field. But he's not split out this time. They're going to roll out right. They're going to throw it. They hit Adanya. He's going to get down to the 30. They're going to trip him up inside the 30. He gets down to about the 27-yard line. Garza to Adana. And, and again, the, the kid is having a great game. I mean, Daquan Ellison, you can talk about him all game, every game. But this other kid has had a super game tonight. He definitely has. Garza, for a first game start, looks fantastic. Except for the time he didn't come out on the field. Right. <laughs> I'm sure he'll catch a lot of grief about that one. 
I've been very impressed with Garza. I, I just, for a kid that I don't know that he took like five snaps last year, he's doing a great job. That's got to be motion on us because like six guys were moving. We're going backwards again. I have a feeling, though, they're always just saying, hey, Daquan needs a few more yards. Back it up. Somebody, somebody jump off sides. 3.36 to go here in the third quarter. 27-7 Lockhart. You got to – I wish you could see the band. The Lockhart band, they're fun to watch. They practice all the time in the parking lot out here with the football field stripes on it. But they sound fantastic. They definitely their, do. their band leader, he's, he's doing a f fantastic job with them. Slot T, tight formation, man in motion, hand up to Daquan Ellison, and they were ready for him. I would almost like to see them put Daquan where Aldana is and let him go around the outside sometime because <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to touch him. Uh, it'll be close. <laughs> Again, it's like I said, Barry Sanders will lose two, three, four here and there. That's Daquan Ellison. He'll lose two, three, and four, and then break one for 12 or 20 or touchdown. With this offensive line, the way they've worked, they've, they've uh, been able to open up huge spots, huge holes. It could happen at any moment. Second and 15, man in motion. Uh, handoff. That one was to uh, Noah Garcia, the sophomore. Not much there. He might have gotten about two on the carry. So third and about 13. 27 to 7, 225 to go here in the third quarter. I don't know that I'm going to see my 44 points tonight. It's kind of slowed down offensively. I'm calling a pass play right here. Honestly, I'm surprised we haven't thrown again. And like I said, with these with these running backs and the way they've worked this offense so far, of course they've they've had uh, little little moments where they've struggled in this in this last two drives, but. Pitch out to Aldana around the left side. He's got a blocker out there. And Garcia, he gets the first down. He's still on his feet. He's inside the 10, down to the 5. What a run. My goodness. Jesus Aldana has had an incredible game. There's a man down for Travis. So everybody's going to be taking a knee on this one. But, again, a superb run. But it was the blocking of number 30, the sophomore, Noah Garcia, he was plowing the road for him out there. I tell you, once you get this man outside, you, you know, you, <laughs> if you can't contain him, you ain't going to stop him. You know, we had some good running backs last year, but we've got about eight this year that can flat run that football. We definitely do. And like I said, I mean, you, you go back and these guys – a lot of these guys are sophomores. Well, and we haven't even seen Jackie Edwards touch the ball yet, and he's phenomenal with the ball. He definitely is, yes. So he's up and looks Travis kid Austin Travis kid looks like he's okay right now. So we are down to the first looks like first and goal from the five. I can't tell from my angle. We're in a new spot this year. Jaden Garza under center. I was gonna say there better be a flag on that one. It doesn't matter about the play because it was procedure. There's This play's not even going to count because we had, I believe it was Garcia. I want to say it was Garcia that was moving before the ball was even snapped. Now get back to that last play by uh, the 25-yard run by Jesus Aldana. With that 25-yard run, it puts him over the 100-yard mark where he has 11 carries for 121 yards. I don't, this is amazing. Now we got two Lion running backs that are know, above 200, I'm trying 100 to yards. I'm trying to think last year. I don't know that we ever had two last year in a game. Mm. We might have. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> 27 to 7, 110 to go here in the third quarter. Lockhart's knocking on the door. They had a procedure call, so Jaden Garza got thrown to the ground pretty hard for nothing. It's at the 11-yard line. We have Devin Clark on the field, so that's a possibility of a pass in the right corner. Man in motion. They're going to go left. They give it to Aldana around the left side. Another Garcia block. Gets him around the corner. Oh, he's so close. Be no, down, he, the down the one. one. I, I, I tell you what, this 
Noah Garcia, the sophomore. Another great block. This kid is phenomenal. He is a great athlete. Third and goal from the two-yard line. Two line. This is almost Daquan Ellison time. Uh, he's right here on the sideline suffering from cramps right now. So that's There's not that. going to be Daquan Ellison. No. Then I'm going to have to go with number 24 touching the ball. Uh, you'd have to go with him because he's had the su success this uh, drive so far. Nope, they went Garza straight up the middle, I think. No, it wasn't Garcia. Garza. It was the little the Garcia. The little bowl. The little, the bowl. little bowl. Number 15. That's Jordan Garcia, just like his brother. Scores the touchdown from two yards <laughs> out and 59 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Great drive by the Lockhart Lions on this one. Despite the, the struggles that they've had with the short runs, they were able to put together a decent drive. And not just that, but it was a, a long drive play-wise. And now they got Sosa holding on the extra point. And it's good. Oh, and that was the big boy. That was Eduardo Ponce who got that one through. And he put, he put a foot into it. I think it's <laughs> over there at Guadalupe. I have that Guadalajara. Nor was that uh, Garcia's restaurant. Garcia, or, Garcia's Garcia, restaurant or, the, or the movie theater. Well, you, I don't yeah, know. At, well, there is an airport over there. so it Looks like we're going to have to do it again, though. Or was that on them? I think it was on them. So extra point this time. Was good, and it was by. So, I think we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break here. So, you are <laughs> listening to Lion Country Broadcast <laughs> Network and KMAX Sports through Vite Magazine. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. 59 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 34-7. to seven. Lockhart's on top. They will be kicking off, and I believe if I saw the penalty right, we're going to get to move the ball even further, further forward to kick off at. So if – oh, and they're going to let – let's see. who they, They're going to have Alfredo James. He's going to be the guy kicking it. He's going to be kicking it. From the 45-yard line of Travis. Yes. Good chance hey, of putting this in the end zone. Definitely. And you know what? It, they're kicking against the wind, so this extra distance right here is going to be in Lockhart's favor. That last touchdown drive for the Lockhart Lions, check this, 13 play, six minutes and one second off the clock, capped off by a one-yard touchdown run by the little bull Jordan Garcia. And, and what is he? He's a sophomore. Yes. And there's a just a kind of a fading kick down to the 15. Oh, my gosh. That was a dangerous play as he took it off the bounce right when the Lockhart guys got there. Every guy but two are there on the tackle. The kicker and one other guy didn't make the tackle. And now we got another little kid out there on the mic. <laughs> Makes you wonder if the kicker was the only one out in the tackle. What are you doing? <laughs> he was picking the tee up. So Great kick. It almost turned over into a turnover for did. the Lockhart Lions. It Lions. really did because the guy was just waiting on it, yeah. and it bounced up, and as soon as he caught it, he got hit by about four guys. 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. I thought this was a fast quarter, but it seems to have drug out a little bit here. But they will have it first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. They have uh, two receivers to the right, one to the left, an H-back, and a tailback, shotgun formation, Lopez. Lopez is going to hand it off straight up the middle, and he is met. Oh, good gosh. This is one of my favorite guys, Kevin Lampkin, senior lineman. This guy is, I call him Hercules. <laughs> there isn't an ounce of fat on this kid. Hercules, Hercules. Kevin Lampkin, he is a walking muscle. He's five foot nine or 10 and plays like he's 6'6 six, six in basketball. He plays for me as well. But he's really a football player that plays basketball. <laughs> so it is second and 11. 
19 seconds to go here, third quarter. Lopez drops back. He's rolling out right. He's going to throw across his body. Almost, Almost picked off. And that was Alex Thompson, a junior. Alex Thompson is one of the most charismatic kids I've ever been around in my life. He is a basketball player, and he's got like he's got a magnet attached to his end, and the ball has a magnet inside of it. <laughs> Wherever he is, the ball is. He is a phenomenal kid. Love watching him. What a good athlete. Just about got a pick off. Yes, most definitely. Go back to that last play with uh, with uh, Kevin Lapkin. You know, a lot of these kids that I see on here now, I remember their, when their big brothers or their cousins were up here playing when I first started coming on. So it's amazing to see how the second generation is coming up with these group with this uh, Lion team. Third and 11 from the 14. Lopez rolls out right. He's got two car on him. He throws it as two car. His is picked off. Picked off. Was that Devin Clark? No, it wasn't Devin Clark. Who was that? I can't tell because he's like a mile away, but I'll tell you in a minute when they quit dancing. I still don't know who picked it off. He's still coming over this way. Looks like a number two. So that will be Jared Galindo, a senior cornerback with the pickoff. And you know what? And this is exactly what we had seen from the Lockhart Lions in the scrimmage. Wait a they, minute. They had. Is that Detron? Number three is Detron Ellison, isn't it? Uh, he's not on the roster. He's not on the roster, but I know that was his number <laughs> last year. Maybe Detron yeah. Ellison is on the field tonight. Yeah. But it, it goes to the speed of this defense. You, I mean, the quarterback's going back, and you have eight defenders that are uh, eight that are out there covering three receivers, and, you know, plays like this happens. Oh, it wasn't number three. It was number nine. It was Caleb, Caleb Jennings, Jennings, another kid from the junior class. Caleb Jennings, another one of those basketball players who's a great athlete. And that, that ends the fourth quarter right there, so – so I mean, we've played three. It's 34-7 to seven Lockhart. We're going to take a break here real quick. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Johnny and Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. All right, there's the typical. We're starting here in the fourth quarter. Uh, procedure on Lockhart, so we'll, we'll make it first and 15 because, again, Dequan needs a few more yards. <laughs> I guess he's still having cramps. I don't see him on the field. Yeah, we got a bunch of youngsters in the backfield now. So, uh, again, we've we've got such a young team of, it seems like the special positions, the, the quarterbacks, the running backs are all underclassmen. Here we go. Hand off to uh, Noah Garcia around the corner. Noah Garcia oh. got hammered. But Noah Garcia knocked three guys with him. He did get he got stuck by number nine, Isaac Wright. But still, Noah Garcia with a great run, an eight yard pickup. And to be fair, Noah Garcia had two defenders, one wrapped around the right side of his arm and one wrapped around his legs when he got hit. So I mean he did take a hard hit, but he bounced right back up just quicker than he felt, then he got, you know, hit the deck. So here we go again, tight set. Going to hand off around the left side. He cuts back up the middle. I want to say it might be Garcia again, and it was. So they're deciding to let Noah Garcia show his magic. Uh, first down for the Lions. It's going to be first and goal from the nine-yard line. And uh, we got another entry on the yep, field. Yep, we sure do. It's uh, – I, I honestly think – the heat and the fact they've only got 31 kids, they're getting wore out. Well, you think they did have to cart one off at halftime, so they dropped it down to 30, and they got one laying on the side over there. So, I mean, they're they're running low on players, but at the same time, you know, Travis is still out there. They're giving it their all. They are. They're not quitting. No. They're definitely not laying down for Lockhart. Oh, no. So, so here we go. Garcia. Or no, check that. Garza under center. Oh, and we jumped again. They they did hit our lineman, 
But then one of our running backs stood up. We'll see who they go on. We're still waiting. Um... Yeah, on, so the they are encroachment. Yeah, yep. The encroachment on the defense is going to move them up so, closer. So Jordan Garcia is probably breathing a sigh of relief as he stood up, but he saw what happened. <laughs> First and goal from the five. They oh no, they went up the middle with uh, Garcia, yeah, didn't they? Or was it no? It, 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 it was the other. Okay, well I faked it to one Garcia and gave it to the other. <laughs> So Garcia doesn't get it, but the other Garcia does, and now it's second and goal from the four. 10.32 to go here in the our final quarter. 34-7 Lockhart. Tight formation. Garza with it. Gives it to Noah. Up the middle. Untouched. Touchdown. Touchdown. Line. Noah Garcia, the sophomore. The last two touchdowns have been – no, I think the last three touchdowns have been scored by sophomores. So with 10-15 to go in the fourth quarter, it is 40-7. to seven. So somebody's prediction is getting really close to being right. <laughs> it's definitely great pressure, great uh, drive for the Lions up front, pushing back that Travis defense. You know, once again, creating huge holes for the for these running backs. Oh, they faked. You know, I don't think they faked it, but Sosa tried to pick it up and run with it. He didn't get anywhere. So it's no good. I want to say one, two. So it is. I think we're talking about one, two, three. Yeah, I want to say the last three touchdowns have been all sophomores. Yeah, because it was uh, Moya. And then it was um, G Jordan Garcia, yeah. and then it was Noah Garcia. So we're at 40-7 to seven here with 10-15 to go in the ball game. Now, I will give this. Emilio did say 50. One more touchdown, and we're there. Yeah, I did say 60. Oh, you said but 60. It's closer to 50. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, there's a zero on the end of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, it just goes to show that how, how you know, how – this offensive line line have been able to create these holes. You know, like I say, with Travis being under man as it may be, but like I said, these guys, they're fine to the very end. So my hat's off to the Travis Rebels defense. You know, they're looking – they're down 34, 33 points with 10, 15 left to go in this fourth quarter, and they're still out there going like it's in the first quarter 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, so, I agree. You yeah. know what? They remind me of Lockhart last year when we'd be behind in games. Yes. They just keep fighting. A short kick received at the 23. That's, that's going to go ball. to the 25. So it's going to be that little new rule again. First and 10 from the 25 is where Travis will start over. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of the younger kids finishing this yes, game up. Yes, most definitely. Before we get to the next play, let's go through the Meitler Storage game break. Alamo Heights, 27. New Braunfels Unicorns, 24. 6.30 left to go in the fourth, fourth quarter. Yovaldi finally gets on the board, but they're still down 35-7 to seven at home with 2.05 left to go in the third quarter. Tyvee down 10 points, 34-24 to 24 to Dripping Springs. As we get to the next play. All right, we got two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to fake a uh, handoff. Lopez rolls out right. He hits his receiver. He's out to the 30, to the 35, out to the 38, where he was brought down by number 31. And that was uh, Ruben Teguma. Tanguma. Um, and then I'm trying to see who that was that caught the ball. It looked like it was Paul Nkanga. And great hit to, for the tackle. Like I said, they're hitting every tackle. Uh, then we got Kennedy Rockets down big, 41 to 12 against Divine. La Vega all over Medina Valley, 39 to 8, 947 left to go in the fourth quarter. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. H back, handoff up the middle. That is Quinta. He's up the middle. He gets out to about the 41 yard line where they'll stop him there. Memorial Miniman. 14 to 6 over Bandera. 10:30 left to go in the fourth quarter. Of course, here at Lockhart High School, Lockhart Lions 40 
Travis Rebel, seven with 9-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. And of course, Bernie Champion loses to Stephen Falcon, 21-7 at yesterday's ball game. Jose Ramon made the tackle last play. They're gonna fake it off. Uh, it's gonna be Lopez running to the left side. Outside he goes, brought down there by number 53. That is Jose Ramon once again. We have another Travis player down though. He pops back up. I think he's cramping up. And it is a hot and humid day out there to, tonight. So, I mean, a lot of these kids are coming up with these cramps and it, it just goes to show they're playing their, their hearts out right now. Third and, and uh, eight, ball's at the 40. That's like Emilio says, you, your hat has to be off to this Austin Travis Rebels team as they are fighting no matter what the score is. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. H back and a, and a running back. They're going to give the hand off there to Punta. He gets around the corner to 43-yard line. Maybe got two. They, they're going to mark him at the 42. It's going to be about third and six. Marcus Mendez in there with a huge pop to drop the running back right in his tracks at the 42-yard line. Actually, that's fourth and sixth. From the 42-yard line, they're going to be going for it. New running back into the scheme. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to hand it off right up the middle. That's the wide receiver turn running back. He's going to be way short of the first down. Isaac Wright did not even get close to the first down. So they'll turn it over to Lockhart on downs. And is anybody, are you ready? <laughs> it is the fourth quarter. It is the fourth McElty. quarter, McKelty. She even took her eye black off when I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> we're, we're trying to involve McKelty here, and, and she's just not wanting to take advantage of it. So it'll be first and 10 for Lockhart at the 44-yard line of Austin Travis. Garza still the quarterback, but some of the other kids that haven't been in are in the game now. Got Caleb Jennings coming in as in the running back position. I guess uh, I would I guess it would be safe to say that if Daquan Ellison isn't out there, They hand it off. Up the middle we go, out down to the, about the 34-yard line. I uh, checked that, the 39-yard line. That was Jordan Garcia. Garcia has, as a sophomore, has decided he will continue to carry the torch of the Garcia family. We have another man down for Travis, and he's grabbing his leg. Um, but uh, this uh, Garcia family, just they breed the running backs. <laughs> And not just any type of running back, the bruising back. Oh, gosh, yes. And if you look at his brother, he's smaller than his older brother, Austin. But he runs just like him. So we've got 721 to go. We're going to take a break here. You are listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. He's he's gimping off, but he is walking. That's a good sign. Definitely is. And stay tuned for the first Lockhart National Bank post-game show as uh, in 7 minutes and 21 seconds is when it will begin as we will bring you the Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game as well as the Farm Bureau Defensive Player of the Game. And like we said, the Offensive Player of the Game could go to a multiple amount of players that's been playing the front line for the Lockhart Lions offense. I don't even think we can say one guy. We just got to <laughs> say the whole line. So here we are, tight formation. Garza hands it. No, he's rolling out. He looks, he throws. He's got a man. It's Adam Romero. It's a touchdown. The guy from basketball, Adam Romero, catches the pass from Jaden Garza, who is extremely excited. He throws a nice touchdown pass. Of about 39 yards, Adam Romero with beautiful hands, a great catch, in stride, touchdown, 46-7. And you know what? On that play, also, 
there was two linemen, uh, two lines that were wide open. Richard Moyle being the second one, and Adam, uh, uh, you know, Jaden Garza had his pick of receivers to throw to. There's the kick, and it looks good. So it was Ponce that makes the extra point. Beautiful 38-yard touchdown pass. Perfect strike. A little high, but Adam Romero was able to use his uh, basketball skills to bring it in for another Lockhart Lion touchdown. And that was what, 49? 38-yard uh, Thir touchdown 38 pass. 38-yard touchdown pass. And the extra point being good. So let's go ahead and take another short break. You are listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Lockhart High School. It's 47-7 to 7 with 7 minutes, 11 seconds left. And they can stop right now, and my, my prediction will be almost right. <laughs> <laughs> here comes the kick. This time it was James that makes the kick. It was a short one. It was fair caught, I believe. It looks like they'll be going from the 25-yard line. Most definitely. And that last score drive for the Lockhart Lions took all of 44 seconds, a two-play drive of 44 yards total, capped off by a 38-yard touchdown pass from Jaden Garza to Adam Romero on a perfect strike. And Adam Romero was wide open. There wasn't a Rebel within 10 yards of him. And what's amazing <coughs> is there wasn't a Rebel within 15 yards of Richard Moyle. So, like I said, here we go with 5.40 to go. 47-7 to is your score. Travis with the ball. They've got four receivers to the left. Oh, actually, they are punting. I forgot it was fourth down. We've had so much going on here. Here comes the snap. An unusual-looking punt. There's nobody back. It's going to die around. The, oh, it's going to take a Lockhart bounce. So it looks like Lockhart's going to get the ball at their own 46-yard line to start their next possession with 5.19 to go in the game. Again, it's 47-7. to Lockhart is on top. Okay, we, fourth quarter. We're back now. We're back. All right. With five nineteen left to go in the fourth quarter, it's amazing. It's kind of want to see if uh, Cole Tremors is just going to want to slow this clock down or speed this clock up by just you know, or is he going to let just let it fly and I, let these guys work the way they've been working? I honestly don't think we'll see another pass the rest of the night. I think he's going to just pound it in there. He's just going <coughs> to smash mouth it. And honestly, we have a shutout tonight, had it not been for a fumble. Yes. So here's a power of play right up the middle. There is a fumble. No, no, he's still on his feet. Jordan Garcia showing the Austin Garcia moves. Big brother should be proud of baby brother as he's running well tonight. Most definitely. And he banged around that offensive line, spun around a couple of tackles, and just kept pounding away. Picked up seven yards on the game, and, you know, this only the little bull can do. I'm just amazed. We have so many sophomores tonight who have been huge to this football game. So here we go. A lot of new linemen. Jaden Garza, he's going to pitch it out to number 32. That's David Garcia around the corner. He's out to the 30, down to the 28, maybe the 29. They're going to mark him at the 29. So number 32 David Garcia, a senior running back. That's the first time we've had somebody other than a uh, sophomore running the ball. <laughs> For a while. 425 and counting. We're not going to slow it down, but I don't think we're going to throw anymore. No, most definitely. You know, it's, the offensive line is just doing their thing. And as we talked, as I mentioned before the game started, Travis came into this game low on uh, suited players. 
And it's, it's starting to show, like I said, yes. it, towards the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, it's going to show even more. But this Rebel defense is still fighting to the end. Nice run around the corner. I, I want to say that was Lampkin maybe. I saw a one, but I couldn't tell what the other number was. No. I still can't tell who it is. His shirt's all wrinkled. 13, do we Thir have it? Yes. That's that Morales yeah. boy we were talking about. Hey, Saul Morales. Morales with the carry. You can't have a better number than 13. That is my favorite number. <laughs> that was a good run. I mean, he got around that corner in a hurry. Morales just a junior. And he fought for most of those yards right there, too. All seven of those yards, he fought for them. Here he goes again around the right side. He's going to get a first down. He's still on his feet. He's down to the five. Inside the five, down to the four. Morales starting to look like O.J. Simpson out there. I mean, my <laughs> goodness. Where's this kid been all night? He's going to get all, to the, all <laughs> the way down to the five-yard line. And not just that, he's a junior. He may not be a sophomore, but you know what? We still got him this year <laughs> and next year. My goodness. <laughs> This is going to be fun. It definitely <laughs> is. And then you also got Daquan's little brother, Daytron, who's a, playing at JV now, who's going to be a senior next year. So, I mean, you throw these sophomores in there I, with Daytron. I, d I, don't oh, see Day I don't see Daytron being on JV very long. No. But he's he will be next year. <laughs> so, here <laughs> we go. the varsity. Here we go. Ah, I knew it. I saw ah. too many guys jumping. Garza was going to try to take it around the left side. He was looking for some of his love. And Definitely. And you know what? It, it's These offensive linemen, they've done their job so well tonight. It's like if you sit down at a buffet and you're done eating, you're ready to go get you another plate because you're right. still hungry. Just like with these guys up front, they've been able to do, you know, run their game plan at will as an offensive line. And they're like, they're ready to get at it, which is probably why they got this false start. Well, here we go. Handing right up the middle. That looks like Jordan Garcia. Jordan Garcia is fighting his way up another the middle. Another line touchdown. And he got him another touchdown. The little bull. Down. He better be careful. He's going to get him a little flag there. He, he's a dancer. So he gets in from 10 yards out. Jordan Garcia, the sophomore, with his second touchdown. Austin Garcia, better watch out. He might be breaking some of your records. <laughs> 2.17 to go. My prediction is now way out the window. Jordan Garcia with a 10-yard run. And who do they have kicking this time? It looks like it is going to be Ponce again. Ponce is a huge guy, but I'm pretty sure that's not oh, – that, he's that's muscle right there. If he's able to kick that ball as far as he's been doing. Snap is good. The wow. kick is up. And he the kick is hard. bulleted right through the uprights. Man, if it, if whoever. <laughs> that was a scud missile through the uprights. <laughs> if somebody would have tried to block that, they'd have broke it, their hand. It would have. Their hand would have been attached to the football going through that end zone, through that, uh, through the uprights. So with that. Fire trade. And now you know the best of the story. Johnny & Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Lockhart High School. We're going to pretend we're still live because we are not sure. <laughs> so we are live. Okay. All right. So we've kind of had a hot spot problem. It decided that the game was way too long and it didn't want to go anymore. So we've been on and off here in the fourth quarter. Um, we're now where we're going to go with, um, and I believe if I remember right, Chuck Nash is going to be the offensive player of the game, and I'm going to take that one over. Chuck Nash, offensive player of the game. It doesn't go to one guy. 
doesn't it go goes, to two guys. It goes <laughs> to the entire offensive line of Lockhart. I don't care what kid was out there, whether it was the starters, whether it was the bench, it doesn't matter. Lockhart's offensive line is the offensive player of the game. I'm don't I don't care what anybody else says. That's my vote, and I'm sticking to it. And so that's the offensive player of the game. Now I'm going to step away, and I'm going to let Emilio go ahead and tell you about the defensive player of the game and some stats. Yes, definitely. Tonight's defensive uh, Farm Bureau defensive player of the game is Eddie Tukar, and gosh, this guy was all over the place in the first quarter. Had a block punt. Sacked the quarterback on two occasions and was just everywhere all over the field, leading this defense of this Lockhart Lions defense to practically a shutout. The only score the Travis Rebels had came on a fumble off of the Lockhart offense and was returned back for a long touchdown. But other than that, this Lockhart defense pitched a shutout. You know, 54 to 7. It's, I think that's the kind of statement these Lions needed not to put out for the rest of the district but for these guys to get back to where they know they can be at. Well, like we did the interview before the game with the two captains. You know, Alex Sosa, a, a soft-spoken kid, he doesn't talk much, had a great game. I mean, you can't just – Tukar had a great game. There's no doubt about it, but there's so many guys that could have been defensive player of the game. But the one thing he said is they wanted to pitch a shutout. They wanted to make a statement. But Guerrera – He's the one that said, we want to pitch a shutout. We want to hit them. Yeah. We want to punch. You know, we want to take control. And that's exactly that, what that's they did. exactly what they did. It's just like all the way to the very end, every tackle, they hit, and they hit hard. And that's the one thing that stayed the same throughout the game. If not, if anything, it got even worse towards the game, towards the end of the game. But that's, you know, it's great to see that because – we're not going to be – we didn't see the Lockhart Lions defense fade as the game got longer. They they got stronger. So that's going to go a long way when we start facing, you know, bigger bigger teams. You know, we get Tyvee. We got Alamo Heights. You know, the top three of what everybody thinks the district is going to be. I think Lockhart could be in the mix for being in the top three, if not the top two. So – and as you, you mentioned, the Chuck Nash uh, offensive player of the game goes to the entire front line. Let me throw you a stat. 49 rushes for 391 yards. Not just that, eight different running backs touched the ball. That's almost eight, that's almost eight yards a carry. It is. And, and you think about that. Like I said, we kept saying it doesn't matter who's running the ball. These, this offensive line created holes for everybody. And, you know, because of that, you know, it's not like, oh, we're just going to open lines for this guy and this guy. They they practically open the line for the whole team. And that's why they've been named the offensive player of the game, and rightfully so. I mean, it, <laughs> this whole offense ran behind that offensive line. Well, and, you know, I was a quarterback. Jaden Garza, first start as a varsity player, I thought he was fantastic, other than not showing up for the to the field for yeah. one, of the, one series. <laughs> Uh, and we had to call timeout, that's about one of the few mistakes he made. I mean, he got hammered on that fumble. No one can say, oh, it was Jaden Garza that yeah. caused us that touchdown. No, that kid hit him. Yeah. And, I mean, he hit him hard. The ball came loose, and one of their guys happened to be in the right place at the right time, and he was untouched. I mean, we had a lineman chasing him down. No yes. one was going to catch him. I thought Jaden Garza had a great football game. And then Noah Garcia, oh, my gosh, that kid blocked – all night long around the they outside, did. and just I was so amazed with that sophomore. So there were so many kids that, but the sophomore class tonight blew me away. It did. It really did. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in all of what what we saw tonight for the Lockhart Lions offense and the sophomores. And gosh, it, it's it's amazing. And it, uh, Shut them out. The seven points was on a fluky play on a fumble. And their defense scored it. So, you know, again, an, a great night. The sophomores really came out and shined well tonight. The seniors played hard and led well. And, again, you know, it just shows that you don't have to run the spread to be successful. Right. So, anyways, with that being said, um, I want to give shout-outs to Randy Fry, who started out as our QA, then passed it on to Chuck Lakata, the Iceman, as our QA. I want to get to McKelty Altier. Uh, she's a senior um, here at Lockhart High School as our producer. For Emilio Desarge Juarez as the color commentator. 
and myself, Scott Smith, play-by-play, that about does it for tonight. So we thank for all, thank you for all you listeners, and we look forward to next week. And where are we heading next week? Next week we're going to be in Taylor, Texas at Memorial Stadium as the Lockhart Lions travel to Taylor to take on the Taylor Ducks. All right. So it looks like Lion Country is going to have some uh, – some barbecue duck. Barbecue yes. duck next Friday. So there you have it. That's it from us. It was a great night for football. It was a great outcome for the Lockhart Lions. There's still a, tons of fans out here talking and on the football field. We're going to call it a good night. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Thank you for listening and good night.